Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the organizer, I would like to extend my sincere welcome to all of you to the webinar on the social security policies of India and Vietnam, organized by the Consulate General of India in Ho Chi Minh City today. And distinguished guests, India 75 is an initiative of the government of India to celebrate and commemorate 75 years of progressive India and the glorious history of its people, counters and achievement. The Consulate General of India in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam is also celebrating by conducting a series of webinars in the areas of India's social, cultural, political and economics identity to enhance interaction, engagement and to promote mutual understanding between people of India and Vietnam. In view of this series, the Consulate General of India in Ho Chi Minh City today is organizing this webinar to create a platform to share the knowledge on different topics, angles, and in the fields of social security policies. Social security is a term that refers to government action programs that promote the welfare of the people through measures that support basic needs such as food, shelter, health care, etc., especially for marginalized groups such as children, the elderly the sick and the unemployed. By that definition, when it comes to developing countries like India and Vietnam, surely the problem of ensuring people welfare is huge, challenging, but equally interesting. So, and now by starting this program today, I would like to introduce dignitaries who presents make today's show special for us. And from Indian side, I would like to introduce His Excellency, Mr. Brani Verma, the ambassador of the Republic of India to the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. Dr. Madan Mohan Sethi, Consul General of India in Ho Chi Minh City. And Dr. Muni Raju, the Deputy Advisor, National Institution for Transforming India, or we can call it Niti Ayok, the government of, of the government of India. Thank you. And from the Vietnamese side, we actually we will have the presence of Professor Dr. Do Thu Ha, head of the Indology Department, Faculty of Oriental Studies, Vietnam National University, Hanoi, University of Social Sciences of and Humanity. But unfortunately, we are having some technical issue that we are unable to connect to her as of now. And uh, also next from the Vietnamese side, we have Madame Nguyen Thị Thanh Tung, the lecturers of the Faculty of the Social Work, Vietnam National University, Ho Chi Minh City, University of Social Sciences and Humanities. And Mr. Nguyen Vic, and uh, from the Department of Foreign Affairs, Dong Nai Province, we are warmly welcome the presence of Madame Bu Thị Tơ, head of the International Relations. And also from the Thuong Prime Province, we are happy to welcome Madame Le Thị Thanh Thuy, the Director of the Economic and uh, Development Office. And uh, further than that, we also have the very uh, special resent of Associated Professor Dr. Nguyen Tung Vinh, the Deputy Director of the Academy of Politics Region 2. And definitely, we are honored to welcome the distinguished guests from other provincial departments, agencies, and representatives from renowned university and center in Ho Chi Minh City and the southern province of Vietnam. That today I can see that we have welcomed the uh, present from uh, the University of the Yang and also uh, the new faces from the uh, Bari Vung Tau University, Bari Vung Tau uh, Ha. Uh, Technologies University and also from the Dalat University. This is the very first time that we welcome you. And from Ho Chi Minh City, we'll, we also welcome many new faces and also our current faces from University of Social Sciences, University of uh, Nguyen Tất Han, University of Hoa Sen University and uh, from other sector from the other university that we usually contact with and especially the University of economic and law. And now to actually start our program, I would like to invite Sri Brani Verma, 
the ambassador of India to Vietnam to deliver a welcome remarks. Please, sir. Yes, sir, you are audible. Uh, thank you very much for uh, asking me to speak uh, briefly on this uh, webinar on social security policies of India and uh, Vietnam. I compliment uh, our Consulate General of India for hosting this event. Uh, this is an important uh, activity in the part of, uh, as a part of the series of programs that uh, we are doing to celebrate uh, 75th uh, Independence Day of India, uh, what we call Azadi Ka Brit Mahotso. Uh, and uh, this, is an, this is a subject on which uh, we have uh, uh, not had many discussions. And uh, I'm really glad that uh, we thought about this discussion and have got a number of panelists here from both sides who could uh, share their uh, insight in this important subject. Uh, social security uh, is an important benchmark of any country's socioeconomic development. Uh, there has uh, been greater attention on this issue, particularly in the context of COVID-19 uh, pandemic, which has disrupted livelihoods uh, and uh, created a, a major crisis, particularly for the disadvantaged sections of society all over the world. Uh, as such, the need for uh, a robust social safety network uh, is, is being acknowledged uh, by all today, uh, by government, by policymakers, by businesses, and of course, common people. In India, uh, our approach to social security or social safety uh, is encapsulated in Prime Minister's vision, what we call in Hindi, Sabka uh, Saath, Sabka Vikas. Which can be roughly translated into English as uh, together for everyone's growth with everyone's trust. Uh, this is actually a motto which uh, focuses on inclusive and sustainable development. Uh, the vision of uh, India's development as inclusive and sustainable development. Uh, it has a uh, two important components. One is about good governance to ensure public delivery and also uh, to ensure people's empowerment through better participation at popular level in programs and schemes and also use of technology for empowering people. Uh, the experts uh, from both sides will dwell into the details of uh, social security uh, policies and uh, philosophies of the two countries. I'll just give you a few examples to give you a sense of how we are, uh, how we have elevated the concept of social security as part of governance in India under this uh, whole uh, motto of Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Vishwas. I would like to mention financial inclusion. Uh, in, in India, uh, there was a large part of the population which remained out of the financial system, uh, the organized financial system. So for example, in 2011, India had uh, hardly 40% of its people who, had, who held bank accounts. Now, because of this financial inclusion program and what we call Jan Dhan Yojana, it's, it's, uh, it's world's largest financial inclusion program actually, we have been able to raise it over 80%, the, the proportion of the population which today holds a uh, bank account. And more than uh, 400 million new accounts have been added in the last four to five years, uh, more than half of which are women. So clearly financial inclusion has been at the bottom, at the foundation of the, the, the social safety network, uh, which, is being, uh, which is being promoted in India. Similarly, housing uh, is, a, is another important area. Housing for all by 2022 is one of the targets the government has set. And uh, more than 70 million uh, housing, new housings have been created over the last four or five years. Uh, universal health coverage. Again, this has been revolu revolutionized in India through this uh, uh, new healthcare program, which is again, uh, was largest health security campaign uh, called Ayushman Bharat, uh, which allows uh, almost 40% of the population 
uh, in India, which is a large number in absolute terms, to gain access to free health care. Uh, women's empowerment is again uh, a very important part of this social safety policy, not just financial support, but also by harnessing the entrepreneurial spirit of women, making them self-reliant. In the context of COVID-19 uh, last year, when we had several uh, uh, disruptions, severe disruptions caused to uh, people's livelihood, uh, we launched several specific, specifically targeting those, con those concerned uh, social security programs. I'll mention two, uh, one, one of which was a provision of uh, free food, uh, which again was the world's largest food security program uh, with an outlay of over $20 billion, uh, which covered 800 million people uh, with free food which is twice the population of the European Union and 2.5 times the population of the United States. Uh, that program has been extended into uh, 2021 as well. Uh, similarly, Prime Minister's poor welfare program uh, had an outlay of $25 billion, particularly to look after those who were worst affected by the food crisis in terms of their livelihood, the marginalized sections. So these are some of the specific measures which have been taken. Đây, đây là những cái chính sách, uh, đây là những cái chính sách mà chính phủ Ấn Độ đã đưa ra trong cái uh, giai đoạn mà đại dịch Covid đã ảnh hưởng rất là lớn đến người dân. Và đây đây là những cái thành phần trong xã hội mà chúng ta cần phải bảo vệ vì họ họ là uh, sẽ đóng góp cho đóng góp lớn nhất cho cái giá trị của một cái kinh kinh tế của một quốc gia. Chính ngày hôm nay là mỗi quốc gia, mỗi chính, mỗi quốc gia đều có những cái chính sách dân sinh xã hội khác nhau và cái việc của chúng. So I'm very happy to be uh, to be uh, to see this uh, discussion taking place today. Uh, I wish you a very productive discussion and hope that uh, your engagement today will throw up some uh, concrete suggestions uh, in this area how we can promote further exchanges and cooperation between India and Vietnam. And we will be happy to follow up on uh, those suggestions. Thank you again very much for inviting me uh, to deliver these remarks. And uh, we uh, look forward to a insightful discussion from the panel. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your very warm welcome remarks. And now, I would like to introduce a little bit about the uh, Niti Ayok, because this is a very new uh, ten, a new participant that uh, the consulate has invited for our event for this time. So the National Institution for Transforming India, uh, Niti Ayok, is, a developing, is developing itself as a state-of-the-art resource center with the necessary knowledge and skill that will enable it to act with speed, promote research, and innovation to provide strategic policies, vision for the government and deal with contingency issues. It is supported by two attached offices, which is Atal Innovation Mission and Development Non-Monitoring and Evaluation Organization and an autonomous body, the National Institute of Labor's Economics Research and Development. And currently, we would like to announce that the undergraduate or postgraduate student or research scholars enrolled in recognized universities or institutions in India and abroad can apply for the Niti Ayok internship scheme, and they will work closely with the Niti's verticals, divisions, cells. Applicants will have to apply online by filling the registration form. Thank you for listening to uh, my introduction to the Niti Ayok. And today, it is our honor to welcome Dr. Muni Rajus, the Deputy Advisor of the National Institution for Transforming India, or Niti Ayok, to share his view on the first topic, recent developments in social security in India. This, sir, 
the stage is yours now. Thank you. Uh, at the outset, I would like to just congratulate uh, uh, respected uh, ambassador to India and Vietnam and also Dr. Madan Mohan Siti. In fact, we were Madan Mohan Siti and we were in discussion long back when I visited Vietnam for a short term, uh, for a week's time uh, for the Asia Europe meeting conference. So uh, really it's a beautiful, wonderful uh, initiative, sir. Uh, I really congratulate being from India and being from Niti Aayog for such an one uh, initiative uh, which you have taken. It's, uh, of course, it's a leading role you're playing, uh, bringing the relationship very concretely between India and Vietnam. Uh, with this uh, remarks, I would like to just to make my presentation on the uh, India's initiatives, how India has evolved and what are the major programs uh, which provide social security for the people. Uh, and also we can, uh, of course, maybe the best practices can be adopted in Vietnam and also Similarly, we can also follow some best practices from Vietnam uh, that way. Give me a minute. Your screen is okay. on now. So, uh, well, uh, we know that, uh, of course, India is a developing country and it has come up with a lot of initiatives because of its socio-economic structure of the community. And uh, we, we say social security... Dành cho xã hội thì cũng, cũng khá là tương đồng, những nét tương đồng. Uh, social security, why? And for whom? And what what means the social security is? We know that the poverty is a common cause for all social and uh, economic backwardness. Uh, that leads to adverse impact on overall human development, uh, especially the health, education, uh, livelihood, employment, housing, etc. It's all like uh, poverty covers the vicious circle of the poverty that leads to many uh, social, economic, and other uh, problems. And, and that ultimately, uh, policymakers has to think to who needs social security. Like me, as the presenter has announced that the people, especially elderly, the disabled, women and children, the workers, and there are certain uh, tribal groups like indigenous communities, what we call. And also in India, we have a special group called transgender people uh, and destitutes who need special attention from the government and also the policy makers. And the other vulnerable groups, those groups there are certain other uh, related vulnerable groups who need social security. So what needs under social security? There are certain initiatives which needs really to address the problems of the people, the, the people who, need in the, who are in need of social security, like financial assistance. Uh, that's the need because many people who are not have good access to the uh, 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 finance. So there is a need of financial assistance to the people who do not have good access to the finance, financial products. And also the food security. You know that the food security is again uh, the other uh, major coverage because no one should not be allowed to suffer due to hunger. With that intention, we need to provide the food security. And education, the IT education we have adapted, in fact, everyone should be covered and the free and compulsory education has been introduced in India. And also health protection. The people who are deprived of opportunities like we are suffering from other one or the other health uh, problems, so that we need to ensure that there is a proper health protection is provided. Employment again, one or the other reasons people remain as unemployed, and this that leads to various uh, economic as well as the social problems. So the government, the policy makers, has to think through. There is a need of employment coverage, and there is a need of providing employment security. Similarly, protection against exploitation. There are certain sometimes there is some kind of exploitation do happens in the society. Uh, either the dominant communities and uh, exploiting the uh, marginals, and also there, there may be some kind of uh, natural disasters that leads to uh, situational exploitation. And accessibility of services and products. There is a, a need of accessibility to some services to the people, certain people like disabled need accessible infrastructure in the country. And similarly, the disabled people, they need, do need products to uh, live dignified life and 
lead normal life at par with the rest of the people and the normal citizen and of course we need an affirmative action which really uh, ensures that the people no one left behind and people get equal opportunities to live dignified and standard life at par with the rest of the society and in india we have a, a, a three word that's called roti that means the food the kapda that means the cloth and the makan the, that means the house these three basic requirements are very essential to people who has to lead normal life in the society so with this academic uh, interest uh, background i would like to just take to you to all of you what provisions india has for ensuring the social security to its citizens and its people of course you know that the special provisions are being included in the constitution of india that to protect and safeguard the weaker sections and ensure that no one left behind which is a sustainable one of the uh, sustainable development goal which is recently adopted but our constitution was adopted in 1950 uh, so that the, the, the provisions for uh, have been incorporated in the constitution of india the preamble itself the preamble which provides basic social approach uh, to its citizens that ensures that everyone is protected and covered the preamble of the constitution of india itself lays down the approach of social approach that provides social security and we do have the fundamental rights the people have been given fundamental rights to live equally and independently and also Uh, without any kinds of uh, exploitation so these are the certain fun, uh, fundamental rights have been ensured uh, to the people of india and the citizens of india and we have the directive principle of state policy that article 41 that ensures that the state shall within the limits of its economic capacity and development make effective provisions for securing the right to work to education and to public assistance in cases of unemployment old age sickness and disablement and in other cases of undeserved want so these are the fundamental principles laid down in the directive principles of the state policy of government in india that in article 41 ensure that all kinds of social security should be provided to its citizens and we have a presidential directives from time to time this all depends on the government the successive governments have come up with a huge number of programs and initiatives uh, under the presidential directives under the directive principle of state policy and also the under the constitutional provision to ensure social security to its in indian citizens so let me say that social security yeah, that there are different types of social securities we have a financial security we have huge number of programs to ensure financial security to its citizens we have economic security uh, to economic empowerment and also food security to ensure that no one suffers from hunger we have a employment security schemes that ensures that people are pro provided employment opportunities to earn their livelihoods and also we have several schemes for health security that, that no person in india no citizen of the country will suffer from health uh, problems so that they are to, to covered under the health insurance schemes and all and we do have education for all and we have a fundamental right like uh, right to education that is from class 1 to class 8 we are given free and compulsory education for all its uh, what children and social protection against exploitation there are certain uh, untoward incidences where people are uh, exploited so that to ensure their protection we have a social protection against exploitation and we do have affirmative actions which from time to time we cover huge number of uh, provisions to ensure that people are provided social security let me draw your attention to the financial security you know that national social assistance program which is a huge program uh, of government of india that provides different kinds of pensions to the people who are in need like indira gandhi national old age pension scheme that really covers all the senior citizens who are below the poverty line that the people who poor people who covered with monthly cash transfer of rupees 1000 uh, of course it is more than that in certain states that uh, the poor persons aged above 60 years are covered and the direct cash transfer has been introduced like from government of india funds are directly transferred to the bank accounts that's to other link other card we have given to every citizen so other link to bank account the cash is transferred 
uh, to ensure that they, they should not face any financial problem, people who are aged or above 60 years. And we do have an Indira Gandhi National Widow Pension Scheme, that monthly cash transfer of about more than 1,500 to poor widows, because they have to maintain the so with that, the widow pension is provided. We do have an Indira Gandhi National Disability Pension Scheme that to cover the persons with disability are getting monthly cash transfer of rupees 1,000 uh, that to poor persons who belongs to disability category. And also we have a national family benefit transfer uh, that, that given to the people, uh, the lump sum assistance to the bereaved household in the event of death of the breadwinner, it's about the cash transfer of rupees 20,000 is given uh, to the family members. These are the major programs I'm highlighting, but because there are several other initiatives taken by the uh, government of India uh, uh, for the uh, financial security. We have a Pradhan Mantri Matru Vandan Yojana. It's the Prime Minister's uh, mother, uh, giving respect to the mother's scheme, that cash incentive of rupees 5,000 is provided to the bank account or the post office account of the pregnant woman and the lactating mothers uh, for first living child. Uh, of the month of the family, uh, and this is given to all the women who are eligible. Oh, sure, especially the pregnant and lactating mothers, mm -hmm. because they cannot earn their livelihood when they are uh, pregnant or during the lactation period. That's oh, one of the uh, government of India has introduced. Five thousand per month uh, to the women, and also the scholarships are provided at uh, various levels. Like uh, the scholarships are provided at the pre-matric stage, like class. Uh, uh, one to class 10, uh, class 12, and also uh, the post metric uh, scholarship for the graduation and post graduation, and also to pursue doctoral degrees and also post doctoral degrees. The, fellowship, uh, the scholarships are provided. We do have a uh, fellowship programs uh, that are provided for pursuing professional courses and also doctoral and post doctoral degrees within India as well as overseas. If someone wants to pursue uh, uh, graduation and post graduation, especially the uh, professional courses and the technical courses, they can be provided uh, various types of fellowship programs, fellowships. And also the, the, the economic security, you know that the, we do have a national banks and regional rural banks that provides, as the uh, Honorable uh, Ambassador as well as highlighting the bank accounts are open for all. Uh, so that provides savings opportunities for the people who can save, save their money into the banks. And also we have a priority lending to the weaker sections and women and disabled. Well, the Reserve Bank of India has provided huge uh, guidelines to the national banks and also the rural banks uh, and the bank, finance institution, banking institutions that we should ensure that there are the people from the weaker section also should be covered under the lending schemes so that they can engage in the dignified economic activities and earn their livelihoods. That way, they can get their uh, earnings. Uh, and also, we do have a credit for business and trade for weaker sections and the women, the people who want to engage in some kind of business or business activities or who want to become entrepreneurs and, and engage in the trade activities like, uh, so that they can be provided financial uh, the, the credit facilities so that they can uh, engage in the dignified economic activities. We do have a credit for housing and other capital assets creation for weaker, weaker sections that the, the, the people should not suffer from houseless and also the creation of their own capital assets, uh, the, the government of India has provided huge scope under the credit uh, flow uh, for the people. And we have a public sector program like relating to the credit and subsidy are being implemented to nationalized banks like national rural livelihood missions and also national urban livelihood missions. They are the major schemes that uh, we ensure that uh, credits are provided to the people for economic activities. And we have a credit facilities and subsidiary loans at the National Finance Corporations uh, for the weaker sections. Uh, we have a different kinds of the National Finance Corporations, like National uh, Finance Corporation for Development of Schedule Cars, National Ch uh, Trade Finance Development Corporation, uh, National Finance Corporation for the Supply Chain Materials, and also National Handicap Finance Corporation. We have a National Backward Classes Finance and Development Corporation. We do have a National Minorities, Minorities Finance and Development uh, Corporation. And also we have a uh, Mahila Kosh that is uh, exclusively to take care of uh, credit facilities for the women with the subsidized loans. And, and these schemes mainly the government of India has set up national finance and development corporations uh, for providing credit 
uh, to weaker sections, there are three types of components like interest-free loans. There are certain credits are provided. There is no interest need to be paid uh, by the uh, borrower. Uh, maybe the person belongs to tribal groups, maybe women group, maybe handicapped. So they are all uh, eligible for interest-free loans up to certain limits. And also the loans are provided with subsidy, like subsidies are provided uh, under the loans and also lower rate of interest, like the, the commercial banks are charging uh, 10 to 12 percent or 8 to 9, 10 percent, whereas the media will charge only 2 to 4 percent of the uh, interest. So they, they can uh, get a credit so they can engage in the various uh, economic activities. And also microfinance facilities, facilities for the self-help group. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, there is a mistake in uh, uh, link to the self-help groups. So we have various self-help groups that belongs to women as well as the disabled, as well as the senior citizens, and also other uh, vulnerable groups, the tribal groups, indigenous groups. Uh, they, they can lead uh, self-help groups that subsidize microfinance is provided with low rate of, low rate of interest uh, to invest in economically productive activities because, because uh, in, the, in India, we have a lot of self-help groups that they are engaged in uh, productive activities uh, like women self-help groups engaged in economic activity like uh, producing uh, certain products and selling it in the market and getting the profit and the profit is distributed equally among the members. So this is how the, the, the people are promoted for economic activities by providing economic security. And also economic intervention, we have a stand-up India scheme to encourage entrepreneurs uh, from vulnerable groups so that the target groups are uplifted at par with the rest of the society. The Stand Up India scheme, Government of India provides all technical as well as the financial assistance uh, to the people, uh, uh, including the uh, people from the weaker sections, so that they can stand on their own hand and they can earn their livelihoods and they can also pro engage in the productive economic activities. That way, you have some, some most things like venture capital fund and also credit guarantee fund program promoting entrepreneur opportunities. Like, under venture capital fund, we need to fund uh, the industries, uh, the entrepreneurs uh, to start their own uh, industrial activities and engage uh, and engage in the economic activities. And also credit guarantee fund, the financial institutions can fund the entrepreneurs so that government can guarantee their credit. So that's how we ensure that the, uh, the person should not suffer from a shortage of money uh, for their economic activities. And we have a Prime Minister Jandan Yojana that is under the Prime Minister, we took a lot of initiatives to ensure that access to various financial services like availability of basic savings accounts, access to need basic credit, like uh, the credit which are required for the economic activities are provided, and also remittance facilities is provided. Insurance and pension are to excluded sections like weaker sections and low income groups is provided under the Prime Minister Jandan Yojana, which is called Prime Minister uh, Jandan. Uh, and uh, we have come up with the various uh, food security measures so that we have a Antyodai Anna Yojana so, uh, the, that to provide food grains to the BPL households, the below poverty line uh, households at the highest subsidy rate of a minimum of rupees 2 rupees per kg per week and rupees 3 per kg per rice and about more than uh, 2.5 crore households are benefited. It's like a huge, it's like a, uh, some countries' population, uh, uh, if you compare that, that much population is covered under the Antioja and Yojana of the government of India. And we do have Annapurna scheme that's like uh, 10 kg of food grains, wheat or rice is given per month for old age persons who have remained uncovered under the, uh, it's called Antioja Yojana. And also we have the integrated child development uh, program. Uh, that's called under the scheme nutritious food is served to all the children below five years attending the nursery education in the uh, schools. And similarly, we have a midday meal scheme that ensures that all children attending government schools from class one to class 10, uh, so in fact, class 12, are served cooked meals in the schools that, that are cooked nutritious meals are served in the schools so that students should not suffer from the hunger and uh, drop, uh, they should not drop out from the schools. So this is how Food security schemes are usually benefiting the people in the country. And the employment security, if it comes to employment security, we have a huge programs like National Urban Livelihood Mission uh, under that that addresses livelihood concerns of the urban street, uh, street vendors and the people in urban areas. 
uh, by facilitating access to suitable spaces uh, for uh, engaging the marketing and also institutional credit. Uh, of course, we have come up with a new scheme uh, to ensure that the people get access to credit facilities, especially street vendor schemes. Uh, we have introduced and in fact, it's usually benefited the street vendors in urban areas. And also we cover under that, uh, that uh, Prime Minister Urban, the National Urban Livelihood Mission, we cover social security and skills to the urban street vendors for accessing emerging market opportunities and sell their products and earn their livelihoods. And also we have a National Rural Livelihood Mission, uh, which is focusing on the rural areas. Uh, that is a, a poverty alleviation project implemented by the Ministry of Rural Development, Government of India. The scheme is focused on promoting self-employment and organizing uh, like uh, rural poor. And also we have a, a huge uh, program that's called Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Program. Under that, uh, so this ensures that people uh, really who are in need of job are provided 100 days minimum work uh, so that they can engage in the work and also engage in the, uh, the, the community assets are created, community development initiatives are created, done. So that under that, the wages are uh, provided, security is there, employment security is there, and job cards are issued to the people who are really in need of that uh, rural employment. So that, that's how NG Narega has created huge opportunities for the unemployed in rural areas. So um, there are other uh, programs like skill training opportunities for the educated and unemployed. Government of India has taken several initiatives for like, providing various skills and also certifying those skills. We do certify so that the, the, the trained persons can get engaged in various uh, employment in India and also overseas. So that based on the skill certificate, so one can get employment in out of the country also. And the promotion of self-employment, of course, a huge number of programs are being implemented for self-employment, both in the urban poor and also the Prime Minister Employment Generation Program that really benefited a huge number of population in the country so that they can secure employment uh, under that program. And also entrepreneurial opportunities through subsidized loans, as I said, for credit facilities so that people uh, should not face any problems to the economic activity, financial problems to the economic activity, so that way uh, they can uh, uh, engage in the entrepreneurial activities like credit guarantee schemes, Startup India, Stand Up India, and also Make in India. We have given a lot of initiatives to through MSME, my, uh, my, um, minor small and uh, medium industry enterprises scheme. Uh, we have promote, we are promoting Make in India initiatives so that the products are produced in India and sold overseas as well as Indian consumption also. And the health security. You know that, of course, health security is the one of the major because of the pandemic there is, uh, problems. So that Ayushman Bharat scheme, that's the one of the major flagship program of the government of India that provides national, this is a, this is a national health protection scheme, which will cover approximately 50 crore beneficiaries by providing coverage up to rupees 5 lakh uh, per family per year. Uh, for secondary and tertiary care hospitalization. So this is a this is a major flagship program that covers the families, household from health, any kinds of health uh, problems. And also we have a Pradhan Mantri Suraksha Bhima Yojana. This scheme is available to people who pay uh, some minimum annual uh, uh, premium of rupees twelve uh, in the age group between eighteen to seventy years. That this coverage under the scheme is about rupees two lakh uh, for accidental death. And also full disability and rupees one lakh for partial disability is covered, so that the people in case of any health problems they should not suffer. Uh, uh, the family should not suffer. So that's why this the scheme has been introduced. And of course, we have a Aam Aadmi Bhim Yojana. Uh, it is targeted toward the low income families of India to benefit unorganized sector people like fishermen, auto drivers, cobblers, uh, the carpenters. We were so many, so many people are covered under this scheme that covers them the monetary aid to face such unfortunate situations like disaster situations or maybe the COVID like situation so that the families are covered. Uh, they should not suffer due to uh, any uh, adverse effects of the, uh, the disasters like situation. And that's a central government health scheme that provides uh, the coverage uh, to the uh, government officials. Those who are working in the government, they can get the free treatment, but there are some deductions uh, so that the people, uh, officials working in the government, 
did not suffer from health problems. Similarly, we have the employment state insurance scheme under which all workers, our MIV sector workers are covered so that their uh, health as well as the economic security is provided under the employment uh, state insurance schemes. Similarly, we have the, in detail, I will just highlight that the scheme provides comprehensive medical care to the central government employees and pensioners enrolled under the scheme. And the, the, the employment state insurance scheme is a public social security and health insurance that fund for Indian workers uh, covers uh, incidents of sickness, maternity, disablement, and death due to uh, employment during employment injury, and also to provide medical care to insured persons and also the family members are covered under the employment state insurance scheme. We have a Janashri Deem Yojana that provide health insurance to coverage to the unrecognized sector workers belong to the BPL category and their family members. So this, this they, somehow they, the, all the schemes that ensure that health security is provided to all its citizens in the country. And as I said, education for all, Samadra Shiksha Abhiyan, which is the, another major flagship program that ensure that all children have access to free education with an equitable and inclusive classroom environment from class one to class 12. So this Samadra Shiksha Abhiyan is a huge flagship program that ensures every children get to education and complete his education till the fiscal standard. We have a, similarly, we have Rashtrasiya Uchitar Shiksha Abhiyan. It's a major flagship program to promote quality education at the higher education level that provides strategic funding to the eligible state higher educational institutions and to improve equity in higher education by providing adequate opportunities of higher education to weaker sections and also socially and educationally backward classes that promotes inclusion of women, minorities, and also differently able of the disabled population uh, that provides huge opportunities for uh, getting quality higher education. And of course, we do have a residential schools and hostel facilities for the people, especially the weaker sections or those who are not able to get into education because of the poverty or other reasons. So we do have a residential school facility for different kinds of uh, people, especially the women, girl children, and also the weaker sections like tribal indigenous groups, uh, so that we provide residential facilities to complete their education, uh, that, that to quality education. And we have a, another scheme like pre-examination coaching and also skill and training are uh, huge opportunities for the people who want to come to, uh, participate in the competitive exams, for example, civil services exams, and also banking services exams, and also uh, sometimes to other skilled programs like acquiring skills and getting into the employment so that these, these, these provisions have been provided and training opportunities are provided to get into the dignified occupation and also granting aid to civil society organizations and the voluntary organizations because government alone cannot deliver its uh, schemes at the, uh, to the uh, rural and remote area so that there is a requirement of voluntary organizations. The government is engaged various civil society organizations to deliver its programs through the civil society organization and ensure that no one left behind or no one uncovered. So this is how these are the education schemes are provided and also rehabilitation of its victims. So there are certain untoward incidents of course happens in every country that ensures the person suffered due to atrocities or on the grounds of religion or ethnicity background. So that there is a monetary relief and also legal protection is provided to the such people and there is the adequate rehabilitation packages are provided so that no one suffers due to untoward incidences. And also displacement and rehabilitation. We know that we are a developing country and there are a lot of people need to be uh, shifted due to some various development projects. That time government ensures that people are adapted, uh, affected due to disasters, sometimes disasters and sometimes displacements. They are provided adequate rehabilitation packages. Both assets are provided and also the monetary relief are provided uh, to the people. And also central employment, health employment scheme for rehabilitation of uh, the, the weaker sections, like especially the scavenge. There are certain communities which age old practice of scavenging when uh, they were mainly engaged in such activities that to shift them. And also we have come up with a new scheme called mechanized cleaning. So that mechanized cleaning has been introduced and we have a national action plan which huge amount has invested in that so that we have adopted technologies to clean the sewerages and septic tanks so that 
is that, that there is a scheme and under this scheme we provide one time cash assistance of up to rupees 40,000 so that they, they can get into ship, they can shift into the other dignified occupation. And they are also provided skill trainings to operate machineries and also machines and also vehicles, motor vehicles, like motor vehicles are provided under these schemes. And the, the government is providing hand holding support to them to rehabilitate uh, due to some one or the other uh, reason. And the intervention of uh, social empowerment, you know that government of India has come up with several registrations for protection and welfare of age, women, children, persons with disabilities, religious minorities, and other vulnerable groups. The legal pro protection is provided so that they should not be exploited. They should be covered with all social security measures. And of course, we have a Save Girl Child flagship program that to prevent gender bias, sex selective elimination. Uh, there are certain regions uh, were uh, earlier uh, were suffering from due to uh, gender bias, sex selective elimination. So that has been prevented legally and also to encourage the girl children uh, and uh, save girl children that the pro flagship program has been come out so that under that program, girl children, are, there is no need of paying fee and there is a huge scholarships are provided, uh, financial assistance is provided to the girl children. And similarly, we have, as I said, the integrated child development program. Uh, that provides supplementary nutrition and also non-formal preschool education uh, and the, the, the uh, nutrition and also health checkups are done at the state and immunization and referral services also are made under the integrated child development scheme. We have a national nutrition mission that reduces the level of stunting, undernutrition and anemia and low birth weight in children also focuses on adolescent girls, pregnant women and lactating mother by providing nutritious uh, food for them and also providing financial security. And uh, of course, we have a strengthened machinery for enforcement, enforcement of social legislation and provision for compensation. So these, these are the major programs uh, the government of India has introduced to ensure that people are provided various types of kinds of social securities and also and uh, provision. We know that there are certain affirmative actions government of India has taken as the constitution of India mandated by earmarking of seats in Lok Sabha and uh, state legislature for uh, uh, the, the, the scheduled pass and scheduled trace, the weaker sections, they, they have been provided uh, reservation. In, they can represent in the Lok Sabha, where, which is the apex, uh, uh, the, the lawmaking body in the government of India. Lok Sabha seats are reserved, and also state legislatures, the seats are reserved for the uh, weaker sections, especially the scheduled pass and scheduled trace, who are left behind. To ensure that they are also to achieve the social inclusion, there is a reservation of seats so they can participate in the policy making and their representation is taken note of it. And similarly, provisions have been provided uh, for the backward communities and the women in urban local bodies and rural local bodies so that the interest of welfare of backward communities and women are taken care so that way they can also be part and parcel of the power, part and parcel of the law making so that the provisions have been made and also providing reservation in education and employment know that the government of india provides uh constitution this is a constitutional and legal provision uh, to ensure participation of marginal and weaker sections in the policy making and also partnering in implementation of the development activities uh, the reservation is provided to the uh, scheduled class scheduled trains other backward classes and also economically backward classes and persons with disabilities and of course, the woman is provided in urban uh, and low, rural local bodies. Reservation is provided for the woman also. And we have a national commissions that that work. They are working like a watchdog in case of any violations or any mismanagement. These commissions do act upon and ensures that the people, uh, the concerned category of people, are protected. Their rights are protected. Their uh, the, the, their legal provisions are protected. Uh, that's how. The, the entire structure is really benefiting the people by providing the social security. So with this, I conclude. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And also, I, once again, I congratulate the uh, Embassy of India and Ambassador and the all his team uh, for taking these initiatives and uh, allowing, allowing me to make the presentation about the Government of India initiative. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Muni Rajus, for a very informative topic.
And I believe that such information is very new to those who are concerned about social security policies in Vietnam to learn more about that aspect of India. And next, I would like to invite Madame Nguyễn Thị Thanh Tùng, lecturers of the Faculty of the Social Work, Vietnam National University, Ho Chi Minh City, University of Social Sciences and Humanities, for sharing social security policies of Vietnam. Please, ma'am. À, xin chào ngài uh, Bà Lê Nay Vua Ma, đại sứ Ấn Độ Việt Nam. À, xin chào tiến sĩ Madam Mona Tethi, tổng lãnh sự quán Ấn Độ tại thành phố Hồ Chí Minh. À, sau, uh, xin chào tiến sĩ Muni Rasu, à, phó cố vấn tổ chức quốc gia về chính sách Ấn Độ. À, về chính sách. À, xin chào tất cả các quý vị học giả, chuyên gia, à, tất cả các thầy cô và các bạn sinh viên à, đã tham gia trong buổi hôm nay hôm nay. À, tôi nhận thấy rằng là có học viện chuyên gia những thầy cô đang nghiên cứu về cái mảng an sinh xã hội thì à, chứng tỏ là cái à, chủ đề ngày hôm nay à, rất là thu hút đối với tất cả mọi người và hy vọng là chúng ta sẽ có một cái buổi webinar thành công thì à, trước khi bắt đầu vào cái à, chia sẻ à, ngày hôm nay thì tôi muốn à, chia sẻ một cái tin mà tôi nghĩ rất là vui ạ à. đó là ngày hôm qua là ngày à, 30 tháng 8 thì à, tàu Isaiyabad là thuộc hải quân của Ấn Độ đã cập bến ở khám hậu quận tư và mang theo 300 bình tạo oxy cùng với lại 100 tấn oxy để hỗ trợ cho Việt Nam chống dịch. Thì điều này chứng tỏ rằng là có một cái mối quan hệ rất là chặt chẽ giữa chính phủ Ấn Độ và chính phủ Việt Nam trong hỗ trợ an sinh cùng với nhau và nó cũng gắn liền với chủ đề ngày hôm nay của chúng ta đó là an sinh xã hội Ấn Độ về Việt Nam. Và cái bài trình bày hôm nay của tôi là tôi xin chia sẻ một vài cái đặc điểm trong an sinh xã hội Việt Nam. Thì bài trình bày của tôi bao gồm 3 phần. Phần thứ nhất là định nghĩa về an sinh xã hội. Phần thứ hai là mô hình an sinh xã hội của các giai đoạn. Phần thứ ba là an sinh xã hội trên một số lĩnh vực. Thì đầu tiên tôi xin đi vào cái phần định nghĩa. Thì hiện nay có khá là nhiều các cái định nghĩa khác nhau về an sinh xã hội. Ví dụ như là định nghĩa của quốc ban, định nghĩa của tổ chức lao động quốc tế hay là định nghĩa của ngân hàng châu Á, định nghĩa của đạo luật an sinh xã hội của Mỹ. Thì đây là những cái định nghĩa rất là quan trọng và cũng được nhiều quốc gia áp dụng mà khi mà sử dụng các cái định nghĩa như thế này thì uh, chính phủ Việt Nam uh, dựa trên cái uh, uh, học hỏi kinh nghiệm của tất cả các quốc gia phát triển uh, cũng như là của các cái tổ chức quốc tế thì cũng đưa ra một cái định nghĩa uh, về an sinh xã hội vào cái hội nghị trung ương uh, đảng toàn quốc lần thứ 9 năm 2001 uh, đó là hệ thống an sinh xã hội Việt Nam là một cái hệ thống chính sách và giải pháp nhằm áp dụng trợ giúp các thành viên trong xã hội thứ nhất là đối phó với những khó khăn và rủi ro khi gặp phải dẫn đến mất hoặc là làm suy giảm nghiêm trọng các cái nguồn thu nhập thứ hai là cung cấp các dịch vụ chăm sóc về y tế và cái nguyên tắc trong cái hệ thống an sinh xã hội của Việt Nam thì thứ nhất là nguyên tắc có tính hệ thống thứ hai là nguyên tắc có mối quan hệ ràng buộc chặt chẽ với nhau à, thứ ba là các cái mức chuẩn của từng hợp phần nhằm bảo đảm cái tính bền vững nhất là bền vững về mặt tài chính và hai cái hợp phần quan trọng trong cái hệ thống an sinh xã hội của Việt Nam đó là bảo hiểm xã hội và là cứu trợ xã hội. Thì về mô hình an sinh xã hội tại Việt Nam có các giai đoạn. Thì theo cái nghiên cứu về an sinh xã hội tại Việt Nam thì chúng ta thấy là có ba cái mô hình an sinh xã hội chính. Thứ nhất là cái mô hình an sinh xã hội cổ truyền. Thứ hai là cái mô hình an sinh xã hội kinh tế bao cấp. Và thứ ba là cái mô hình an sinh xã hội kinh tế thị trường theo định hướng xã hội chủ nghĩa. Thì đầu tiên về cái mô hình an sinh xã hội cổ truyền thì nó nằm trải dài trên hai cái giai đoạn. Thứ nhất là giai đoạn thời phong kiến và thứ hai là cái giai đoạn thời pháp thuộc. Thì với giai đoạn thời phong kiến thì chúng ta thấy rõ ràng là lịch sử của đất nước hình thành và phát triển thì luôn phải chống chọi với hai cái kẻ thù quan trọng đó là chiến tranh và thiên tai. Chính vì vậy là ngay từ xa xưa thì người dân Việt Nam đã sớm hình thành cái nền an sinh xã hội cộng đồng. Đó là nền an sinh mà ở đó mọi người dân người ta hỗ trợ, người ta giúp đỡ lẫn nhau để cùng nhau vượt qua khó khăn. Mà chúng ta thấy là nhiều câu ca dao tục ngữ à, vẫn vẫn còn à, tới bây giờ đấy ạ. À. Đó là ví dụ như là lá lầm đừng đá rách hay là bầu ơi thương lấy bí cùng vân vân. Thì nhà nước phong kiến dựa trên cơ sở của tư tưởng Phật giáo đó là tư tưởng cứu khổ cứu nạn và tư tưởng của ngôi nho giáo là coi dân như con và lấy dân làm gốc. Thì nhà nước phong kiến cũng đã tiến hành lập các cái quỹ ruộng, à, quỹ thóc trợ giúp đối tượng có khó khăn đặc biệt như là quả phụ điền hay là cô nhi điền hay là học điền và 
các cái phường hội cùng cảnh để tương trợ giúp đỡ và đổi công và chúng ta thấy rõ ràng là trong cái hệ thống trợ giúp xã hội phi chính thức ở trong cái thời điểm à, cái thời kỳ phong kiến này thì phát triển rất là mạnh mẽ với sự trợ giúp của dòng họ làng xóm và nhà chùa nhà thờ tuy nhiên là cái hệ thống trợ giúp xã hội phi chính thức này thì thường là thực hiện trên quy mô nhỏ đáp ứng được một cái phần nhu cầu của các đối tượng cần có bảo trợ và cái hệ thống trợ giúp xã hội phi chính thức này nó có vai trò rất là quan trọng để bản đảm an toàn cho các thành viên trong xã hội và chúng ta thấy rằng là cái an sinh xã hội cộng đồng hiện nay rất là mạnh mẽ ở Việt Nam thứ hai là thời kỳ pháp thuộc thì cái mô hình từ thiện an sinh xã hội theo kiểu tây phương được hình thành à, dưới sự bảo trợ của nhà nước Pháp và một số cái chương trình an sinh xã hội như là chính sách bảo hiểm xã hội hay là trợ giúp xã hội cho các viên chức mà làm việc trong các cái công sở của Pháp hay là một số tỉnh thành phố lớn mỗi bệnh viện à, làm trại tế bào vân vân thì đã được hình thành rồi hệ thống nhà chùa nhà thờ hiệp hội nghiệp đoàn của những người lao động cũng thực hiện các hoạt động nhân đạo từ thiện nhưng mà tiềm lực thì rất là nhỏ bé và theo cách phân loại của nhà xã hội học Đan Mạch Gotta Espin Andersen thì Pháp đã để lại dấu vết hoạt động an sinh xã hội ở Việt Nam theo kiểu bảo thủ song song với các hoạt động từ thiện thiện nguyện của tôn giáo nhưng mà tiềm lực rất là bé và chúng ta thấy rằng là năm 1930 với sự ra đời của Đảng Cộng sản Việt Nam với cái tư tưởng là nhà nước của dân do dân và vì dân thì cái tư tưởng về an sinh xã hội nó cũng có sự đổi mới thứ nhất là người lao động cần lao được chăm sóc giúp đỡ thông qua các tổ hội ái hữu các chính sách xã hội đã được đề cập đến và những cái tư tưởng này thì nó đặt nền tảng cho tư tưởng xây dựng một cái xã hội an sinh chủ xã hội chủ nghĩa và vai trò của gia đình dòng họ cộng đồng làng xã nhà thờ nhà chùa có nghĩa là an sinh xã hội cộng đồng mà giữ vị trí quan trọng trong cái hệ thống an sinh xã hội tuy nhiên do cái đặc điểm lịch sử trong thời kỳ này à, thì đảng chưa có thể thực hiện được những cái chính sách an sinh xã hội và cho đến cách mạng tháng 8 năm 1945 à, dạy thì đã giải quyết những cái khó khăn cấp bách của đời sống nhân dân, tăng cường thực lực cách mạng trên các mặt chính trị quân sự, kinh tế, văn hóa xã hội. Có nghĩa là cái tư tưởng an sinh xã hội của nhà nước ta đã được thực hiện à, mà chúng ta thường thấy là có ba cái giặc cần phải cái gì đó là giặc à, ngoại tâm, giặc dốt và giặc đói. À, đến mô hình à, an sinh xã hội thứ hai là mô hình an sinh xã hội dựa trên nền kinh tế bao cấp thì à, nó cũng trải dài từ năm 1945 tới năm 1000 đến cuối những năm 80 thì trong cái giai đoạn này nó lại chia thành hai giai đoạn đó là sau năm 54 và sau năm 75 thì chúng ta thấy là trong cái à, giai đoạn mà cái hệ thống an sinh xã hội theo nền kinh tế tập trung bao cấp quân đi bao cấp nhá, thì nó bị ảnh hưởng bị tác động nhiều bởi các nước xã hội chủ nghĩa đặc biệt là hệ thống chính sách bảo hiểm xã hội và chúng ta thấy rằng là sau năm 1954 thì an sinh xã hội miền Bắc thì theo hệ tư tưởng xã hội chủ nghĩa đó là chính phủ cung cấp toàn bộ cái dịch vụ an sinh xã hội theo cái khả năng kinh phí của nhà nước và các hoạt động giáo dục, y tế, việc làm được xã hội hóa công, cung cấp cho mọi người dân. Và an sinh xã hội miền Nam do cái đặc điểm lịch sử thì lại theo xu hướng mô hình tự do được tổ chức theo mô hình tư nhân hóa là do ảnh hưởng bởi cái mô hình an sinh xã hội của Mỹ và dịch vụ xã hội an sinh xã hội được cung cấp từ công cộng tư nhân và các tổ chức từ thiện à, cho đến năm 1975 à, tới năm 1986 là trước khi đổi mới thì cái hệ thống an sinh xã hội của Việt Nam à, tập trung vào à, cái quan trọng nhất đó là các cái chính sách thương binh liệt sĩ à, chăm sóc người có công với cách mạng thứ hai là các cái chính sách phát triển kinh tế thứ ba là giúp đỡ cho các đối tượng người già cô đơn và đặc biệt là cải tạo các đối tượng tệ nạn xã hội À, và nhà nước cũng tiến hành sử dụng các cái cơ sở an sinh xã hội của chính quyền cũ để có thể hỗ trợ cho người dân và chúng ta thấy là trong cái thời điểm này thì nhà nước cũng tiếp tục nhấn mạnh tới vai trò của an sinh xã hội cộng đồng đó là cái vai trò của gia đình dòng họ cộng đồng đặc biệt là vai trò của hợp tác xã thì à, trong cái khu vực làm công ăn lương và đối tượng người có công á, thì chủ yếu dựa vào chính sách an sinh xã hội của nhà nước và trong khu vực kinh tế tập thể thì à, chúng ta chủ yếu dựa vào cơ chế hỗ trợ của hợp tác xã về những người sản xuất tự do và tiểu nông thì chủ yếu dựa vào gia đình, dòng họ và cái cộng đồng. Thì trong cái giai đoạn này, nhà nước cũng ban hành rất là nhiều văn bản liên quan tới bảo hiểm xã hội đối với công nhân viên chức nhà nước, à, thu trợ xã hội đối với những người nghèo, người không may bị rủi ro trong cuộc sống và ưu đãi xã hội đối với những người có công. Và tất cả các hoạt động do nhà nước thực hiện cũng nghĩa là một cái đặc điểm rất là nổi bật trong cái mô hình an sinh xã hội này đó là nhà nước vừa đảm nhiệm hai chức năng là thứ nhất là chức năng ban hành chính sách và thứ hai là chức năng thực hiện chính sách thông qua bộ máy của mình và chính vì vậy thì cái nguồn tài chính chủ yếu là từ ngân sách nhà nước à, chính vì vậy áp lực lên cái ngân sách nhà nước rất là nhiều thì một cái kết luận rút ra trong cái mô hình an sinh xã hội thời điểm này đó là 
với cái cơ chế điều hành theo kiểu hành chính mệnh lệnh đã dẫn đến cái việc là nhà nước không phát huy được tất cả những cái nguồn lực trong xã hội chính vì vậy mà xã hội lãng phí rất là nhiều nguồn lực nhưng mà phân phối lại mang tính bình quân và chính vì cái phân phối mang tính bình quân như thế này thì người lao động hoàn toàn trông chờ ý lại vào nhà nước mà không có sự cố gắng và phấn đấu vươn lên À, mô hình an sinh xã hội thứ ba tôi muốn chia sẻ đó là an sinh xã hội dựa trên nền kinh tế thị trường theo định hướng xã hội chủ nghĩa là bắt đầu từ sau năm 1986 là khi mình bắt đầu đổi mới cho tới hiện nay thì à, thứ nhất là cái hệ thống an sinh xã hội trong cái thời kỳ nào của Việt Nam nó chịu ảnh hưởng của các quốc gia mà có nền kinh tế thị trường phát triển cũng như là của các tổ chức quốc tế và hệ thống an sinh xã hội Việt Nam thì từng bước hướng tới bao phủ tất cả các thành viên trong xã hội Tạo, nhiều, tạo nên nhiều cái tầng lưới an sinh xã hội để bảo vệ các đối tượng yếu thế à, bị suy giảm, bị mất hoặc là khó khăn về kinh tế. Và một cái đặc điểm mình thấy nó rất là là tiến bộ đó là nhà nước dần dần thể chế hóa các hoạt động bằng hệ thống pháp luật an sinh xã hội, tạo khung pháp lý để mọi người dân được bảo vệ và chăm sóc. À, song song thì nhà nước sẽ đẩy mạnh các chương trình xóa đói giảm nghèo, à, giảm bớt cái khoảng cách trên lệch giàu nghèo giữa thành thị nông thôn, giữa miền núi, vùng sâu, vùng xa và miền xuôi. Rồi, thứ hai, nhà nước cũng chú trọng trong chăm sóc gia đình thương binh, gia đình liệt sĩ và người có công với cách mạng. Thứ ba, đó là chăm sóc đời sống của người lao động. Thứ tư là nhà nước tiến hành đổi mới chính sách, đổi mới tiền lương. Thứ năm là phát triển hệ thống bảo hiểm xã hội với nhiều chế độ khác nhau cho người làm công ăn lương. Và trong cái giai đoạn này thì nguồn lực an sinh xã hội có sự thay đổi. Nếu như trước đây trong cái mô hình mà cái thời kinh tế bao cấp thì nhà nước phải chịu tất cả những cái tài chính thì trong cái thời điểm này tài chính nhà nước vẫn là chính nhưng mà kêu gọi sự đóng góp của toàn dân của các tổ chức xã hội tổ chức từ thiện tổ chức kinh tế trong và ngoài nước chính vì vậy nó tạo ra một cái sự thay đổi đó là an sinh xã hội có sự đổi mới mạnh mẽ về cơ chế chính sách và giải pháp thực hiện các cái chính sách bảo hiểm xã hội bảo hiểm y tế có sự thay đổi cơ bản từ cơ chế bao cấp sang cơ chế thị trường từ cơ chế một bên là chủ yếu là nhà nước thì sang cơ chế ba bên đó là người lao động người sử dụng lao động và nhà nước và nhà nước cũng tiến hành áp dụng cơ chế tham gia bắt buộc và tự nguyện và cái hệ thống an sinh xã hội trong cái thời điểm này được thực hiện theo nguyên tắc là có đóng góp có thừa hưởng và hướng tới bao phủ toàn dân cùng với đó thì hệ thống an sinh xã hội cũng tiến hành là tách hoạt động sự nghiệp về bảo hiểm xã hội và bảo hiểm y tế ra khỏi quản lý nhà nước và hình thành quỹ độc lập về bảo hiểm xã hội và bảo hiểm y tế thì chúng ta thấy là trên slide là có một cái mô hình về cái hệ thống an sinh xã hội hiện đại là hướng tới bao phủ tất cả các thành viên trong xã hội, không để ai bị bỏ lại sau lưng. Và cái mục tiêu cuối cùng của hệ thống an sinh xã hội hiện đại là sự đồng thuận xã hội, sự công bằng xã hội, ổn định xã hội và phát triển bình vững để đảm bảo ba chức năng quan trọng là phòng ngừa, giảm thiểu và khắc phục rủi ro dựa trên các cái chính sách. Thứ nhất là các cái chính sách chương trình bảo hiểm xã hội. Thứ hai là các cái chính sách chương trình bảo hiểm y tế. Thứ ba là các cái chính sách chương trình trợ giúp đặc biệt thứ tư là các cái chính sách chương trình trợ giúp xã hội người nghèo à, trên ba thể chế thứ nhất là thể chế tổ chức chuyên nghiệp thứ hai là thể chế tài chính bình vững và thứ ba là đội ngũ cán bộ quản lý chuyên nghiệp và phần cuối cùng à, tôi muốn chia sẻ với quý vị ngày hôm nay đó là thực trạng an sinh xã hội hiện nay trên một số lĩnh vực cơ bản thì cái phần này tôi chỉ lướt qua một số đặc điểm cơ bản còn cái phần chi tiết và đặc biệt là về những cái chính sách liên quan tới lĩnh vực Covid thì lát nữa cô Phó Giáo sư Tiến sĩ Đỗ Thu Hà sẽ trình bày chi tiết hơn ạ. À. Thứ nhất về lĩnh vực việc làm về thị trường lao động thì chúng ta thấy là cái lĩnh vực này có sự tương tác chặt chẽ. Và từ năm 1995 các cái quy định pháp luật về bảo hiểm xã hội bắt buộc đối với người lao động ở khu vực chính quy đã bắt đầu có hiệu lực. Và trong cái điều 4 luật bảo hiểm xã hội đã quy định những cái chế độ bảo hiểm xã hội như là bảo hiểm xã hội bắt buộc, à, bảo hiểm xã hội tự nguyện, bảo hiểm thất nghiệp. Thứ hai, trong lĩnh vực giáo dục à, thì à, quan điểm của nhà nước ta à, thì là mọi công dân Việt Nam đều có quyền bình đẳng trong học tập, à, không phân biệt dân tộc, tín ngưỡng, giới tính, gia đình và vị trí xã hội. À, thì chính phủ sẽ giữ vai trò chủ đạo trong giáo dục à, về phương diện chính sách cũng như là kinh phí đầu tư. Nguồn kinh phí sẽ là nhà nước và gia đình, học viên cùng đóng góp vào nguồn ngân sách để tổ chức giáo dục thì học sinh tiểu học mầm non thì không phải đóng học phí nhưng mà gia đình phải mua sắm sách vở đồng phục phương tiện dụng cụ cũng như là hỗ trợ về cơ sở vật chất cho trường học thì cách đây 3 ngày theo cái nghị định 81 cho 2021 của chính phủ thì bắt đầu từ ngày 15 tháng 10 năm 2021 thì có sự thay đổi về đóng giảm và miễn học phí cho tất cả các cấp học từ mầm non cho đến đại học th
Thứ ba về y tế thì các hoạt động y tế tại các trạm xá ở địa phương, phòng khám, bệnh viện vân vân trong lĩnh vực tư nhân, nhà nước thiện nguyện đã bắt đầu phát triển. À, hệ thống an sinh xã hội thì mở rộng bảo hiểm y tế tự nguyện cho người lao động ở khu vực phi kết cấu, học sinh, sinh viên, người dân vân vân. Chương trình phát thẻ y tế miễn phí cho những người thuộc diện chính sách, người nghèo hay là người cao tuổi, người ở miền núi, nông thôn, vùng sâu, vùng xa thì đã được triển khai. À, trẻ em dưới 6 tuổi cũng được điều trị miễn phí. À, các bệnh viện công hiện nay thì cũng đang dần tự chủ về tài chính. Và chúng ta thấy là trong thời gian qua thì có cái sự thông tuyến ở bảo hiểm y tế của các tiếng quận huyện thì tạo điều kiện cho người dân ở các tỉnh người ta có thể lên thành phố để khám chữa bệnh cũng là một cái thuận lợi trong thụ hưởng dịch vụ y tế. À, và cái cuối cùng mà tôi muốn chia sẻ với quý vị đó là cái chương trình cứu trợ xã hội. Thì đây là một cái um, hợp phần rất là quan trọng trong hệ thống an sinh xã hội về Việt Nam. Và chúng ta thấy là trong cái hợp phần cứu trợ xã hội như thế này thì cái an sinh xã hội cộng đồng nó thể hiện được vai trò của mình rất là mạnh mẽ à, dưới sự à, chủ đạo của an sinh xã hội nhà nước. Và chúng ta thấy là trong à, các cái vụ à, thiên tai như bão, lũ lụt hạn hán hay là đặc biệt là bây giờ đang có dịch Covid thì cái sự tham gia đóng góp vai trò của các cá nhân, tổ chức, gia đình, xã hội thể hiện rất là mạnh mẽ. Uhm, ví dụ như là có rất là nhiều tổ chức hiện nay họ cung cấp lương thực, thực phẩm, thuốc men, rồi bình oxy à, tới từng những cái hộ dân mà đang gặp khó khăn, những gia đình đang gặp khó khăn trong đại dịch. Hay là chúng ta thấy là vai trò tham gia của các tổ chức tôn giáo à, trong việc hỗ trợ cho người dân gặp khó khăn. À, thứ ba là mình thấy cũng có sự đóng góp chủ đạo của nhà nước à, trong việc là hỗ trợ cứu chữa cho những cái người bị nhiễm covid và thứ tư là mình thấy là thời gian vừa qua là có sự tham gia của quân đội à, trong hỗ trợ chính quyền à, về ngăn ngăn chặn dịch covid cũng như là hỗ trợ người dân à, chữa trị covid cũng như là bảo đảm cái an sinh xã hội bảo đảm cái an toàn lương thực thực phẩm cho người dân và cuối cùng à, có một cái hình ảnh à, tôi muốn chia sẻ với quý vị rất là dễ thương ạ à, là những anh bộ đội đang đi lửa sữa và à, hỗ trợ cho người dân à, mua những cái cái hàng thiết yếu như thế này hình ảnh rất là dễ thương rất là gần gũi giữa quân và dân cuối cùng à, xin chúc à, quý vị thật là nhiều sức khỏe thật là bình an trong à, dịch cảm ơn quý vị đã chú ý lắng nghe dạ vâng ạ Thank you, Madam uh, Thanh Tùng, for your remarks. And... Xin cảm ơn uh, cô đã có, có phần chia sẻ thú vị. Yes, and I would like to also thank you Bây for your remarks. Xin... Và tôi cũng xin cảm ơn ông tiến sĩ Lung Nguyên Phú Giang phần chia sẻ. Oh, sorry. So I would like to come back for my MC role today. And uh, thank you, Madam Tom, for your remarks. And uh, I think it's also very informative for our friends in India about all of the uh, social security system in Vietnam that uh, also some similarities has been shared between the two countries because of the uh, same in the economic and also the social uh, aspect. And next, and next, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Do Thu Ha for your remarks and also your sharing. And uh, thank you for joining today, Madam uh, Professor Dr. Do Thu Ha. We, we thought that uh, we could not connect to you. And um, Madam Hai here, she will share a topic on social impacts of COVID-19 and the strategic policy for Vietnam. Dear Madam, please come to the stage. Dạ cô Hà ơi mình chắc cái uh, cái 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 rồi cô mình chưa có mở mic cô à em em unmute cô đã. Dạ rồi. Ừ, đúng không? Dạ đúng ừ. rồi cô. At first I would like to thank uh, the consulate of Indian Embassy in Ho Chi Minh City for inviting me to talk today. And uh, as you know that uh, The previous speakers, I think that uh, would talk about the general policy about social security in India and Vietnam. I myself, I think that I will choose something very specific and uh, something I think that in a hot issue right now, uh, it's the strategics social policy in Vietnam during COVID-19. Mm. 
đã lên chưa em? Dạ em rồi, ơi. dạ rồi cô ơi, okay. dạ rồi kỹ thuật yeah. ok ạ. Dạ. Ok. My talk will have a three parts. Uh, the first is the background, second is the strategic policy in Vietnam during COVID-19. And the third will be the response by the domestic and international community uh, to the policy of the government of Vietnam. First, I'd like to talk about the background for the COVID-19 epidemic in Vietnam. And you know that, uh, you know, here I give you some information from uh, one bank uh, update to um, the 7th April, uh, the year 2021, yes, about the development of Vietnam. As you know that Vietnam development over the past 30 years has been remarkable. Economic and political reform under renovation or uh, in Vietnamese we call Doi Mới launched in the 1986 have spurred rapid economic growth, transforming what was, you know, what the world poorest nation into the lower middle income country right now. Vietnam right now ranking uh, 87th uh, on the world scale about economic development. Between the year 2002 and the year 2018, GDP per capita increased by uh, 2.7 times, reaching over two, uh, 2,700 uh, billion, yes in the year 2018 and more than uh, 45 million people was uh, lifted our poverty. Right now in Vietnam, as you know that uh, we have only 6% of the population under the poverty line. I have to talk about that because uh, all the policy, yes, uh, during COVID-19, uh, a Vietnamese government uh, will rely on, you know, the economic uh, situation. Uh, if you cannot, uh, you know, uh, have a good uh, resources, how can you uh, anti the ep epidemic? The second thing uh, we have to talk about this, uh, since uh, the first case of COVID-19 were reported in Vietnam, uh, you know that uh, on the um, the government of Vietnam accelerated effort uh, to cooperate with uh, the spread of virus and provide treatment of those infected uh, without fee. To contain the outbreak, the government put in place regulation uh, so that they, you know, can reduce the uh, mobility of people closing school and non essential service, uh, as well as the implement, uh, you know, over time a regime of social and physical distance. Why Vietnam gradually relax social distancing measure since, uh, you know, uh, the first uh, April, the year 2020, new cases have been recently identified and anticipated a protest, uh, you know, uh, wave. In this context, many people, especially vulnerable people, continue impacted by the multiple and potential long-term impact of the pandemic. You can see here, you know, Vietnam Prime Minister at the time, Nguyen Xuân Phúc on the left. Yes, and he he's a staff prepared document ahead of the special Asia summit on COVID-19 in Hanoi, Vietnam on Tuesday, April uh, 14, the year 2020. Uh, it means that, uh, you know, we have a good cooperation with our neighbor 
And also we share our experiment uh, and uh, experience to them. Up to now, how's the, the pandemic, you know? Uh, we need to within Vietnam and globally remain uncertain. Because as you know that, you know, the situation um, first seemed to be controlled, but after that, you know, gradually, you know, become more and more serious. Yes, expert predicts the crisis will be protracted with a long path uh, to recovery. To address the uncertain outlook and impact on the most vulnerable people, the UN Secretary General in the statement on 16 April and then T and the lie, the need to closely look at this, uh, you know, intricacy of social <coughs> and economic impact of COVID-19. So uh, this talk we mainly discuss about strategic policy uh, of Vietnam, Vietnam government uh, during COVID-19, its domestic and international response and effective need up to now. And uh, some Im social impact of uh, the pandemic, uh, I will uh, answer you in the Q&A session. You can see here that uh, the commoners in Vietnam, the expert, and also, you know, the people at work during COVID-19. So the second part, I will talk about strategic policy in Vietnam during the COVID-19. To prevent disease from further spreading, government of Vietnam has uh, taken multiple drastic and scientific measures, including issuing new documents and directives, establishing a national steering committee for disease prevention and control that is uh, headed by the Deputy Prime Minister Nguyen Đức Đàm. Yes. And uh, putting infected suspected and potentially infected patient in quarantine, uh, maximizing resources to three COVID-19 infected patient. The Prime Minister of Vietnam at the time, Mr. His Excellency, you know, Nguyen Xuân Phúc, is still a directive setting. 15 day national social isolation from 0 a.m. on April the 1st, 2020, following the principle that family are isolated from families, village are isolated from village, communes are isolated from commune, district are isolated from district, and provinces are isolated from provinces to ensure the highest level of uh, disease control and prevention. The Ministry of Health of Vietnam has established a treatment subcommittee, a specialized committee for infectious disease, and has regularly consented on treatment of patients in worse condition. Uh, you can see here, you know, uh, taking the patient uh, number 91 as an example. He's a British citizen occupation as a Vietnam Airlines pilot. On possible solution, including using medicine, using survivor uh, indicators have been discussed in detail. In addition, the Ministry of Health also conducted inter-hospital consultation uh, with leading expert to develop the optimum treatment regimen. So how about the strategic policy in Vietnam? I think that include uh, five principal uh, regulation. The first is uh, providing free treatment to COVID-19 infected patient, free testing of those suspected and even in blockaded area and quarantine. 
The cost of treating COVID-19 patients in hospital is based by, you know, the insurance. Uh, uh, so according to Vietnamese government policy, it means that it's free. Vietnam used state budgets to pay for those infected with COVID-19 who do not have insurance except for foreigners. Isolated uh, patients in need of medical attention will be entirely compensated by social security. During you know, a free drink uh, or facial towel, gloves, hand sanitizer, or an antiseptic solution, toothpaste shop, uh, and other necessity are provided to patients during the isolated period, as well as the free transportation to isolated areas. Funds from the state government as used to offer free meal. Yes, and further, the, furthermore, the Vietnamese government also provide free assessment to the people returning from outbreak uh, jobs. This approach distinct Vietnam and other worldwide country, including the United States. As I know that the uh, cost for American patients have to pay uh, from 35,000 USA to 1 million, uh, 1.5 million US dollar per person. So you can see that Vietnam is not, uh, you know, a rich country, but the government have to try their best to help the people uh, to overcome the pandemic. And Vietnam has a constructed field hospital. Uh, yes, and uh, they also have a closed school, encourage company and state agency to operate through the online system to ensure prop isolation. The above mentioned policy have a significantly contributed to stabilizing the situation, creating people peace of mind, and also building trust towards the government decision. Vietnam success treated you know, 215 patients at uh, 10 p.m. on the, you know, 20 April, including three, uh, 33 foreign uh, patients uh, for the first wave of pandemic. And you can see here, you know, Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, when it applies social distancing, uh, measure under Prime Minister Directive uh, 16. And you can see here, you know, it's very strict social distance measure from 6 a.m. on the July 20, 24 to prevent further spread of COVID-19 pandemic. According to the latest dispatch issued by the Municipal People Committee, you know, July uh, on the uh, to on twenty uh, third, uh, you know, July, the year two thousand twenty uh, one evening. So everywhere right now, you know, that is empty. Um, in fact, that uh, you know, there's a discipline, discipline uh, in during the time of uh, pandemic is very important uh, because it can prevent the spread of the pandemic. And the second uh, strategic policy uh, of Vietnamese government is uh, focusing on measures and resources to produce, you know, the test kit, ventilators, and building an excellent medical team. Facing the complicated uh, situation of COVID-19 epidemic, government of Vietnam with specialized agency of Ministry of Science and Technology had discussion with leading experts and scientists to figure out the orientation. 
the study contribute to the prevention of COVID-19 disease. Subsequently, we know that the Vietnam Department of Social and Technology unanimous proposed to concentrate study guidance on epidemics, uh, uh, you know, that uh, virology and special treatment scheme, especially for the development of biology detection products uh, kit uh, for COVID-19. Uh, typically that uh, they talk like that, research and manufacture a brain time RT-PCR and uh, RT-PCR to develop a novel strain of coronavirus, a military uh, medical academy directly under Vietnam Ministry of Defense. This one I have to say that is a very difficult, uh, different from other countries in the world is that uh, during COVID-19 in Vietnam, all the forces of the country, you know, uh, combine together uh, and work, uh, you know, very closely uh, to save the country. Um, as uh, <clears throat> uh, Mrs. Tung talked uh, before, uh, we can see a lot of images of uh, Vietnamese um, military forces, you know, uh, contribute to uh, anti uh, the epidemic, epidemic in Vietnam during that time. And this one, you know, on scientific and technology, uh, technological field also, uh, the military medical academy also, you know, have a very close uh, cooperation with the uh, um, uh, Department of Social Technology in Vietnam. And the COVID-19 detection kit, test kit of Vietnam is manufactured under the rigorous procedure and comply with requirements, such as optimize the testing methodologies thereby preventing incorrect manip manipulation. I also have to talk to you that uh, this one, you know, also is very successful uh, in uh, economic uh, aspects. And why I say like that? Because uh, the test kit in Vietnam is very cheap. Uh, inside the country, uh, we uh, used about, you know, the cost uh, of uh, 15 US dollars to produce one kit, but uh, uh, to um, to, to export outside is, you know, is uh, become is <laughs> how to say is a big profit. That's why, you know, during COVID-19, I, I can say to you that, uh, you know, last year, uh, the first time in Vietnam, we have uh, uh, some, some, some very good news is that, you know, export in Vietnam, uh, very successful. The first time, you know, is a surplus in export compared with uh, import. So another thing is that the key reason time minimized so that only nine minutes. Uh, the cost can also be reduced following the key evaluation on patient sample, a precise finding you know, for the device and experiment was recorded. Government of Vietnam also cooperate with number of blast enterprise and expert space living in manufacturing ventilation because of promotion of their research and production of domestic ventilator have a vital aspect on the process of controlling disease in Vietnam. And you can see here, you know, on uh, the right of, uh, you know, this slide that is the, the test kit of uh, Vietnam, you know, uh, was used uh, in domestic and international uh, market. And typically, I think that I uh, will take one example. It is a wing group, uh, a businessman fab network. Uh, on the 3rd April 2020, this group announced uh, the production of all kinds of ventilator and uh, tap mode couples 
to supper, supply the Vietnam uh, market. Uh, and uh, he, um, you know, this group also uh, donate uh, 5,000 units of uh, non-invasive uh, uh, breathing apparatus to the Ministry of Health uh, of Vietnam for timely prevention of COVID-19 pandemic. At the same time, the Vietnam government also cooperate with uh, external uh, partner such as the uh, Metron uh, Corporation Limited and Enterprise with a uh, number of years ex experiment in producing CPR in Japan. And uh, I have to say to you that uh, the um, head of uh, this corporation is uh, overseas Vietnamese. Yeah, his uh, professor uh, Chen Van Pao is very famous. And uh, that's why you know that uh, um, we can have, uh, you know, the sharing the patent of uh, intellator with the partner in Vietnam. And the third strategic uh, policy of Vietnamese government is uh, mobilizing businesses and society as a whole to engage social uh, security development. Government of Vietnam mobilized capital from corporation and individual in the executing uh, of the social security program. Three research program was financed by the Innovation Fund Vina Group to react uh, rapidly again acute uh, uh, respiratory infection by a two, uh, 20 billion Vietnamese down train equivalent to uh, 860,000 uh, US dollar and continue to spawn 100 billion uh, Vietnamese down equivalent to uh, 4.5 million US dollar to buy COVID-19 epidemic prevention equipment. And also we have a landing packet of, uh, you know, 100 of thousand of billion Vietnamese down at drastic reduce interest rate for individual and company have been put on the market. You can see here, you know, many banks in Vietnam, uh, you know, participated uh, into uh, this sort of program, for example, like uh, AB Bank has uh, uh, elemented many brief and transfer uh, packages on lending interest uh, rates, such as, uh, you know, uh, the brief and uh, launch for corporate customer up to, you know, uh, about 128 million US dollars. Uh, HD Bank also have started to deploy a prevention credit packet uh, equivalent to 210 million US dollars to support customer to, you know, uh, pay the salary uh, for their employee. And a number of large Vietnamese banks also offer, you know, prevention uh, packet as a Vietnam Vietcom Bank and uh, BIDV. Mm. And according to SSI security companies, the scale of prevention, you know, uh, restaurant package supporting enterprise overcoming epidemic disease in Vietnam now amount to uh, about 30 billion US dollar. So it means that uh, uh, besides the support and trial uh, from government of Vietnam, also, you know, the corporation and company and banks in Vietnam also contribute to the cost of uh, the country. And the fourth strategy in the Vietnam is, uh, you know, <coughs> organizing excellent propaganda on disease prevention and propagation and resolutely applying measure to handle violation in disease prevention to ensure maximum hand, you know, of the 
uh, company uh, community. This one is very famous. Even you know many uh, broadcasting corporation uh, in the world like uh, CNN, like uh, Reuters, UPAI, um, British uh, broadcasting corporation. You know uh, mentioning about that. Uh, they have uh, many programs to introduce about the excellent propaganda movement in Vietnam to prevent uh, COVID-19. So uh, we can say here that Vietnamese government has actively organized uh, propaganda and education uh, through you know, many kinds of uh, hoarding as following the motor of, uh, you know, coming uh, to the house, knocking at the door, scouting each uh, neighborhood to catch the epidemic situation and uh, set up control points in complex uh, area and region with high risk of, con uh, of infection. And uh, we can have here, you know, um, a lot of uh, highly educational slogan, uh, slogan such as uh, standing when the, com uh, the country needed. Uh, we go to work for you, please stay home for us and uh, fight the epidemic uh, like a fight against enemy to be in a center of shell protection and prevent uh, disease in the community. You can see here a larger poster to against uh, the COVID-19 in Vietnam during the, uh, this time. And uh, um, the thing is that uh, the survey reason, uh, you can see here that the social network uh, user strongly supports the slogan to propagate to the people about the prevention of the pandemic with the uh, 88.1% of the people surveyed strongly supporting the job. This shows that in addition to propaganda with the panel, poster and promotional uh, video, the songs, uh, this uh, slogan also bring practical effect because they are close and easy to commit to the people. And the fifth uh, strategic policy in Vietnam is that the Prime Minister of Vietnam reported to the National uh, Assembly Standing Committee on measure to support people in difficulty during the COVID-19 pandemic. Government of Vietnam believe that the disease of COVID-19 has affected many industry and section, uh, sectors of our economy in the unextensive way, namely that a great many companies are haunting the activity and reducing their site. According to Vietnamese government, it is initially estimated that 19% of the enterprise has ceased operation and downside 98% of service and tourist workers have lost their job. 78% uh, of transport, leather, and textile worker have uh, been laid off or stopped working. 98% uh, of aviation worker are uh, temporarily absent from work, uh, as a figure from National Assembly of Socialist Republic of Vietnam 2020. So Vietnamese government proposed that it should promptly issue policy to direct support worker and people facing trouble and subtly reduce income due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The support is based on the four principles. The first, supporting the subject uh, who have a substantial reduction in income loss are uh, under employment and who do not afford the minimum living standard due to direct impact by COVID-19 epidemic. The second is that the state and uh, enterprise share responsibility uh, in ensuring life for labor 
The third is that uh, the, the support to ensure the right subject, publicity and transparency not to take advantage of the policy. And the part we can see here is the riot uh, retising the allocation of resources from the state budgets to implement policy in this legislation. That's why, you know, on the April 2020, the standing committee of the National Assembly of Vietnam conducted an extraordinary meeting to review and comment on measures to support people confronting difficulty caused by the epidemic. At the meeting, the National Assembly Standing Committee agreed to propose solution to support those people due to the pandemic with estimate scale of about, uh, you know, 2.7 billion US dollars, including directly from the state budgets, indirectly from the unemployment insurance fund and the credit from social policy bank. And it support about 2 million people from six different groups, such as the grow with, uh, you know, meritorious uh, service to the revolution, how the home poor and near poor has home, the employee has a labor contracted terminated for a maximum period of uh, three months. On April uh, 9th, 2020, Vietnamese uh, Prime Minister Nguyen Xuân Phúc Sai, Revolution uh, 42, through the AFOC remission social security packet. In addition, Vietnam also proposed to reduce uh, electricity, water, and income tax payment, and so forth to ensure that those social security policy are implemented in the most effective way. So some lesson, according to World Bank uh, about the strategic policy in Vietnam, how to save the country and also, you know, uh, still develop uh, the econ economy. Government uh, of Vietnam respond to COVID-19 epidemic shows the effectiveness of a combination of foresight and practical, practicality. Here are three specific examples. The first is that physical management. Before the outbreak of the epidemic, the Vietnamese government managed to store significant cash flow through, you know, prudent financial management. So the government could uh, cope with the COVID-19 epidemic in a state of readiness. In addition to applying uh, Vietnam, you know, physical regulation, 5% uh, of the year 2020 purchase was used to set up a reserve fund for emergency. As a result, the government can respond immediately to the crisis at both of the central and local level without the need for domestic or uh, foreign loan. And the second is that about trade and logistics. According to WTO forecast, global trade in the year 2020 will decline about 15 to 30%, which is one of the main concerns of Vietnam. As one of the most open economies in the world, Vietnam has quickly taken action to reduce logistic costs for exporter and its seal guidance on reducing administrative procedures, cutting fee and simplify custom and uh, formality as the major transport hub. And the third is, uh, you know, building a digital, a digital economy. Although there is a very uh, dynamic export to uh, Vietnam, uh, you know, export uh, sector, Vietnam digital economy is still relatively lagging behind, as you know. In response to the COVID-19 crisis, 
Vietnamese government has impact on a series of reforms, uh, starting with the application of digital technology in disease prevention. The government is currently considering the huge electronic payment through a new electronic payment system to reach the two thirds of people in Vietnam who currently do not have a bank account. So how about the response by domestic and international community to uh, the government of Vietnam uh, policy? As we know that the policy and social security activity of government of Vietnam have been highly appreciated by the international community. community. The survey was published by Dahlia Research uh, in Germany on the third, uh, March 30, um, 2020. So 62% of Vietnamese people say that Vietnamese government uh, took appropriate COVID-19 disease control measure, none too aggressive or loser. According to, uh, to the same foundation, Vietnam is the country's highest satisfaction in the world in reaction to the government response to the disease. And you can see here also that uh, the community uh, social uh, security in Vietnam, I think that is very important. Um, you can see here the rice ATM for the poor. This one is uh, always uh, free for the poor. It means that anyone uh, who uh, uh, would like to contribute to the called uh, antivirus uh, COVID-19 in Vietnam can uh, you know, take part in that. Uh, you can give some uh, uh, rice uh, you know, for the poor here and the people come to collect, uh, you know, uh, the, the rice themselves. And here, another example is that the support from uh, Vietnam's football team, uh, they, you know, um, support for uh, the fund of uh, vaccine for COVID-19 with uh, 300 uh, million Vietnamese dome. And uh, you can see here, you know, uh, Mitchell Wolf, Chief Medical Specialist Office of American Center for Disease Prevention and Control. He said that uh, Vietnamese governmental leader from the center to local level paid attention and directed timely take measure comprehensively, radically, and thoroughly to deal with COVID-19, especially in raising the awareness of people and the community. And uh, Professor Kattair, uh, Emeritus uh, Professor at University of New South Wales, Canberra, uh, you know that uh, on Asia uh, Thai, uh, argue that uh, Vietnam you know, is a united society during the COVID-19. And uh, also we get the support from uh, the people outside of Vietnam. Here you can see that we, uh, the United States uh, government also support for Vietnam to against COVID-19. Uh, you can see here is that, you know, they up to now, they, uh, support uh, 20.9 million US dollar with uh, uh, technical support and also 5 million uh, dollars uh, for uh, Moderna vaccine to Vietnam. So it means that, you know, that uh, this one is very, very important. And also it happened with our uh, partner as uh, Japan, as China, as Korea, as France, as Germany. So it means that Vietnam is not allowed to fight uh, COVID-19 during this time. And uh, also, you know that the foreign uh, company in Vietnam, uh, uh, you know, contribute to uh, the call 
to against uh, COVID-19. You can see here Samsung. Samsung is a very, very famous uh, corporation of Korea, South of Korea in Vietnam. And they, uh, you know, uh, support for um, vaccination uh, fund uh, to against uh, COVID-19 in Vietnam with uh, 40 billion Vietnamese dong. Beside newspaper outside of Vietnam, like uh, Financial Times, The Diplomat, US, uh, New World Report, Daily Mail, uh, Express, uh, CO, UK, or major international news agency, such as Reuters, AF, uh, P, appreciate the fact that Vietnamese government, you know, try uh, at their utmost taking a series of broad measures to prevent epidemic, including uh, proper and timely policy on social security. And you, you can see here, you know, that every day we uh, updated the uh, situation about COVID-19 in Vietnam and uh, it's open for everyone. Yes, every day like that. And we also have uh, some kind of comparison with our neighbor to uh, encourage people <laughs> to follow the discipline. And uh, for example, you know, here to the first of uh, um, August 2021, yes, up to now is the first phrase uh, to anti uh, COVID 19 in Vietnam. And um, Vietnam right now is amongst uh, of the country, you know, with the number of COVID-19 tests per, you know, uh, confirmed case, the highest in the world. This means that uh, Vietnam's government tried their best to prevent uh, that um, epidemic. Yes. And the uh, good news is that during the COVID-19, GDP growth for cats in Vietnam still, uh, you know, uh, raising. And you can see here the year 2019, the year 2020, the year 2021, and the year 2022. Yes, this one, you know, is um, the, the, the most serious uh, prey. Uh, it doubt uh, very much and right now become raising. So conclusion, I think that Vietnamese government would receive approval from Vietnamese people through sensitive, uh, sensible, very practical policy that seek to ensure reinstitution of social security and human rights. It can be affirmed that the government of Vietnam has a mass style uh, social security policy in controlling and coping with the COVID-19 pandemic becoming a top praiseworthy nation in this world. The second is that, you know, investigating those policy from Vietnam practices, we can draw a great deal of experience that need to be referenced here. The first to employment, the correct and timely social security policy to cope with the COVID-19 pandemic Country need to take rapid, quick measure, especially considering the appropriateness with the characteristic of geography, climatic condition, and economic base of each region, country, and social group. The second is that the implementation of social reduction and social isolation is a method that has been proved to be correct in practice. The reduction and isolation must be conducted radically mobilizing all level and all branches to participate. In process of isolation, there should be timely package of social society security, especially package related to treatment, living expenses, psychological stability, and so on. The third is that it is necessary to promote 
the synergy and the consensus of the whole society. This one very important because uh, some group is left behind. That be policy must pay special attention to and touches the uh, underprivileged in society because they are very vulnerable and in need of support and attention of the government and the whole society. What is uh, timely and lawfully handling violation, especially the case of uh, deliberately violating the government regulation, opposing the task force in epidemics prevention. Vietnam has employed this form of fine and imprisonment even in many cases to ensure the deterrent and rule of law. This one is very, very strict and you know, the fine is very high, I can say to you. The FIP is well organizing the monitoring of support packets during the implementation of social security policy to respond to pandemic, to avoid corruption and negative uh, phenomena, especially to uphold the responsibility of leaders and strictly handling uh, violation during the implementation of support policy. Thank you very much is my talk. Uh, I would like to take any uh, question uh, to answer in the Q&A session. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Professor Dr. Do Thu Ha for your very informative and I'm sure that uh, the statistic that you have collected is uh, really meaningful and also is it is, is has a lot of information that uh, our participant and also our guests, our Indian guests can uh, take it and do the research on their role about the social security and also the social impact of the COVID-19 in Vietnam. And now I would like to uh, move forward to the uh, Q&A session. For all the sharing point of our guest speaker today, I hope that everyone is having some useful takeaways and continue to the webinar today. I uh, the most expected session that everyone await the Q and A session. Throughout our registration form, we receive unexpected question for our speaker, which I believe that everyone is really keen on the social security policies of Indian and Vietnam. So let me ask the first question for um, Dr. Muniraju. Sir, so are you are you on the, yeah, the okay. mic on? Okay, sir. So I received one question saying that, as Dr. Muniraju has said, there are many programs to support the lives of residents, but how the government can ensure sustainable funding for those programs. So I want to ask for more information about this. Well, I will, well uh, that's a very good question. In fact, uh, we know that government of India is economically viable, and it is it's, uh, uh, under the form and uh, to confirm the uh, leadership of Honorable Prime Minister. We do get generate internal revenues, and also we, of course, uh, uh, India's trade economic growth is very quickly growing, and uh, uh, the, the, we have uh, uh, of course going for the fact with the World Bank uh, for addressing the pandemic issues. And before that, I would like to just to uh, make certain uh, uh, decisions of the government. You know that uh, on 26 March 2020, one uh, honorable prime minister has made a huge package of about 22 billion. Uh, sorry, it's a finance minister made an announcement. And also, of course, we implemented uh, in its true spirit. On 15th May, prime minister of India has declared a COVID relief package of about uh, uh, 20 trillion of Indian rupees. And on uh, 14 November uh, 2020, about 2.6 lakh for comprehensive stimulus package uh, was released to the various organizations under different uh, teams. So government of India economically, it has its own resources internally and also generating with resources uh, through international trade and as well as uh, by uh, taking externally aided projects and all. So that's how government of India's budget is sustained. And of course, we ensure that uh, there is no dearth of funds for its initiatives. And uh, as a special packages uh, 
I'll, I'll, I'll just make the direct, the lot of direct benefit transfers uh, <clears throat> were announced and also done uh, about uh, all farmers. It's about uh, one four means in the sense it's like hundred million uh, farmers have been credited a direct cash transfer of about rupees six thousand uh, for the farmers so that they should not face any problems uh, during the COVID pandemic. Similarly. Uh, the wage under the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Program has been enhanced uh, so that about 50 million families uh, got benefited out of it. And about 30 million senior citizens and widows and disabled people have got one time cash uh, ex gratia about uh, rupees 1000 uh, in two installments. And about 200 million women. Jandan account holders uh, have been given uh, cash ex ratio amount of rupees 500 per month uh, for three months during the lockdowns, which were announced. And also, similarly, women, uh, about 83 million families below the poverty line have uh, covered under the Ujwala scheme uh, that get uh, all women uh, uh, free of cylinders, LPG cylinders, for three months. About 6,30,000 self help groups. Uh, which, of course, helping the about 70 million households, uh, the government has doubled the collateral fee loans up to rupees 2 lakhs. And then the state governments have been directed to use the welfare fund for building and construction workers. Uh, there is a huge amount of uh, uh, deposits under the building and construction workers' uh, accounts. So that money has been distributed to the, the people, especially the migrant laborers and the people, the workers engaged in building and construction workers, and the district mineral funds, which were uh, which were, uh, were uh, district mineral uh, rich districts, about 310 billion rupees have been used for the benefit of the uh, migrant workers and also building and construction workers and the uh, uh, worker families working in the mining sector. And uh, uh, as I highlighted already, about the 5 million uh, healthcare workers have been benefited uh, uh, up to 50 lakh uh, health insurance coverage so that health workers who suffered one of the other setbacks during the COVID pandemic has been uh, covered with 50 lakh uh, rupees uh, compensation for them. And uh, you know that th th there are huge packages announced, a lot of initiatives we uh, took, uh, the government of India, including the industry sector, really about. Uh, uh, Indian rupees 3 lakh crore, about US dollar of 39 billion collateral free loans were provided up to 100% credit guarantee to the MSME sector. Uh, uh, similarly, non banking financial institutions have been supported, real estate sector has been supported, and uh, insolvency and the bankruptcy code has revived, and also uh, rupees 1 lakh to rupees 10 million uh, with the intention to prevent triggering of. Uh, Insolvency provisions within the MSME sector is protected. And there are other similar, like uh, uh, employment measures we have taken, like Atma Nibbar Bharat Rozgar Yojana, uh, which is a new uh, employees under the Employees Provident Fund organizations, registered organizations, uh, they enjoyed that benefit and they benefited, of course, they supported by the uh, Employees Provident Fund contributions. Uh, that scheme has covered about 65% of employees. And 95% uh, of the establishment in the formal sector have benefited about 10,000 crores under the Prime Minister Garib Kalyan Yojana has boosted rural employment in the informal sector and encouraged the growth of the rural economy. So that's how we took a lot of initiatives during the COVID and provided the benefits. And uh, Indian government has no dearth of funds for providing its initiatives. And that we have the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister, President Prime Minister. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Muni Rajus, for your sharing. And uh, I would like to uh, suggest that for all these questions, uh, we will have a uh, summary and we can send to our speaker to have a uh, broad reply on this question and we can share it to your email later on. And moving next to our next key question, I would like to invite uh, Madam Tong for, for the question. Uh, so I, I, uh, em xin phép đọc tiếng về cái câu hỏi này ạ. 
là xin hỏi cô Tùng là các là các diễn giả có nghĩ sao về việc thay đổi hình thức của các gói an sinh xã hội hiện nay, đặc biệt là tại vùng có dân tộc thiểu số, dân trí thấp, những gói an sinh này đã tăng cao tính ỷ lại của đối tượng và tỷ lệ sinh sản tự nhiên gia tăng vì họ cho rằng là luôn có nhà nước sẽ lo cho cái cái vấn đề an sinh xã hội của họ. Dạ cô Tùng, dạ cô Tùng mic đã on rồi ạ. Câu hỏi của khán giả dành cho tôi thì hôm nay cô xin có một vài ý trả lời cho câu hỏi một cái này. À, tại vì trên, trên thực tế hiện nay thì có rất là nhiều gói về cứu trợ xã hội, về trợ giúp xã hội cho các nhóm đối tượng dễ bị tổn thương trong xã hội đặc biệt là các nhóm dân tộc thiểu số miền núi vùng sâu vùng xa thì à, trước nay từ trước tới nay thì các cái gói hỗ trợ như thế này là hoàn toàn là là, là miễn phí cho cho người dân người dân mà đối tượng tổn thương hoặc là người dân nghèo à, ví dụ như là các cái chương trình sau đó giảm nghèo à, các cái cái gói hỗ trợ vân vân nhưng mà nó cũng mang lại một cái 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 cái, cái mặt đối 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 ngược đó là một mặt là nhà nước lo an sinh xã hội cho người dân nhưng mà mặt khác nó lại mang tới cho người dân cái tính ỷ lại vào các cái gói hỗ trợ của nhà nước ví dụ trên thực tế hiện nay thì nếu mà mình mình xem một cách rõ ràng thì có rất là nhiều người người ta muốn được vào cái danh sách hộ nghèo bởi vì rõ ràng vào hộ nghèo thì sẽ được rất là nhiều thứ ví dụ như là những cái gói tiền hỗ trợ của nhà nước hàng năm dành cho các hộ nghèo được đi học miễn phí nó có nghĩa không phải đóng học phí được bảo hiểm y tế miễn phí rồi lại những ngày lễ, ngày Tết, những cái ngày mà kỷ niệm của những, của, của nước mình á, thì lại được các cái gói hỗ trợ của nhà nước cũng như là các mạnh thường quân thì thường thì sẽ hỗ trợ các, các cái hộ mà trong cái danh sách hộ nghèo. À, chính vì vậy thì nhà nước mình mới thấy được cái mặt tiêu cực của cái vấn đề này bên cạnh là, là, là lo an sinh xã hội cho người dân thì à, hiện nay thì nhà nước cũng có một số chính sách ví dụ chính sách cho vay tín dụng ví dụ thay vì mình đưa một cái gói tiền để hỗ trợ cho người nghèo thì bây giờ thông qua cái ngân hàng à, ngân sách của nhà nước à, cái cái ngân hàng chính sách của nhà nước thì cho các gói vay tín dụng với lãi suất thấp hoặc là không lãi suất nhưng mà bắt buộc là người dân khi vay thì sẽ có hồ sơ vay đầy đủ và người dân cũng sẽ cam kết với nhà nước là sẽ hoàn lại vốn vay sau khi mà cải thiện được kinh tế trong vòng một thời hạn bao nhiêu lâu đó thì những cái thông tin vay này nó sẽ thể hiện rất là rõ ràng thông tin vay thời hạn vay và sẽ có cái người giám sát cái chuyện này thì nó cũng là một cái phương pháp để nhà nước kiểm soát cái tính ỷ lại của người của, của một bộ phận những cái người mà mà người ta ỷ lại vào cái nguồn tài chính như thế. Cái thứ hai là cái chính sách làm các hộ dân à, giúp nhau làm giàu thì, thì 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 theo tôi thấy là ở một số địa phương thì hiện nay cái cái phong trào này nó rất là mạnh mẽ. Ví dụ ở các tỉnh miền Tây chẳng hạn nó có những cái khu vực mà người ta trồng 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 bưởi trồng trái cây thì trong đó sẽ có những hộ dân người ta làm giàu lên từ cái việc mà người ta trồng trái cây phát triển kinh tế như thế này thì những cái hộ dân mà làm ăn kinh tế khá như vậy thì họ sẽ cho vô một cái nhóm trong địa phương à, có nghĩa là chính quyền địa phương họ sẽ quản lý và cho cho vào trong một cái nhóm như vậy thậm chí là người ta bây giờ người ta thành lập các cái hợp tác xã luôn và người ta sẽ kéo những cái hộ nghèo tham gia vào trong các việc chuyển đổi kinh tế cải cách kinh tế như thế để thay đổi cái cái, cái cái kinh tế của người dân và một cái thứ ba nữa là hiện nay à, ví dụ ở đây nếu mà thầy cô nào mà dạy à, hoặc là làm bên lĩnh vực phát triển cộng đồng thì chúng ta sẽ thấy rất là rõ ràng các cái dự án về phát triển cộng đồng hiện nay của nhà nước phối hợp với các tổ chức quốc tế các NGO và các tổ chức trong nước thì hiện nay người nhà nước mình đang có một cái thay đổi trong hướng tiếp cận á có nghĩa là thay vì à, mình đưa cho người dân à, người dân chỉ được hưởng không thì các cái cái dự án phát triển cộng đồng á họ sẽ bắt đầu là họ sẽ đi từng bước ví dụ như thay đổi nhận thức của người dân làm sao để nhiều người dân người ta thay đổi nhận thức được rằng họ phải thoát nghèo và cái thứ nhất cái thứ hai là người ta cũng sẽ dạy cho người dân về cái cách thay đổi cho làm ăn kinh tế ví dụ như là à, người dân người ta muốn à, làm giàu lên thì người ta phải à, phải được tập huấn về cái kỹ năng làm việc như thế nào phải phải chuyển đổi nghề nghiệp ra sao à, phải được dạy nghề như thế nào thì các dự án đó nó sẽ hỗ trợ người dân làm những cái cái việc như vậy thì rõ ràng như thế thì nó sẽ hỗ trợ cho người dân là sẽ không còn cái tính ý lại vào các cái, cái chính sách an sinh của nhà nước mà người dân họ sẽ có một cái nhận thức thay đổi rằng họ phải thay đổi, họ phải thoát nghèo, họ phải vươn lên. Thì thì đó là những cái ý mà tôi muốn trả lời cho câu hỏi của quý vị. Xin cảm ơn.
Dạ vâng, uh, thank you Madam Tung for your Madam Tung for your uh, reply. And I think it's it's kind of the uh, reply is very meaningful and uh, informative that we can uh, take it forward for another question that I would like to ask uh, Professor Dr. Đỗ Thu Hà. That, uh, em xin hỏi cô Hà một câu hỏi là, là trong hai năm trở lại đây đại dịch Covid-19 đã đang ảnh hưởng nặng tới cuộc sống của người dân, đặc biệt là các đối tượng dễ bị tổn thương như là trẻ em, người cao tuổi người bệnh và người thất nghiệp. Vì vậy là dựa trên cơ sở nào ta có thể tính toán và đề ra những chính sách an ninh xã hội phù hợp nhất với tình hình kinh tế, chính trị và khả năng của các quốc gia với yêu cầu của người dân. Xin cảm ơn cô ạ. À. Em xin phép là sẽ gõ cái câu trả lời câu hỏi này vào trong phần chat box ạ. À. Xin mời bà bà. Dạ có cô cái slide của cô đã lên rồi ạ. Okay. Uh, in fact you know that uh, I prepared this already. Uh, but uh, because I afraid that uh, you know we sort of time that's why you know that uh, uh, tôi có uh, you know just left it for um, Q&A uh, session. So uh, Mm, I think that uh, this question is a very good question and also a very important question because, uh, you know, uh, during uh, COVID-19, uh, a lot of people, especially, you know, the vulnerable, you know, they have to suffer a lot. Uh, so I give you some uh, information uh, from my uh, part. Uh, on the figure I give you uh, here is uh, one, uh, you know, is uh, belong to the official figure from uh, Vietnamese government. Another thought is that, uh, you know, on the uh, UN United Nations uh, organization uh, figure. So that I think that uh, the figure should be more uh, objective. Uh, the first uh, is that uh, you know during um, during uh, COVID-19, uh, a lot of uh, people. Uh, I, I mean that the vulnerable, the poor people, uh, have uh, limited access to water, uh, sanitation, and uh, weak hygiene uh, practices. Uh, Why the key defense against uh, COVID-19 is hand washing, for example? Access to water is a rather serious challenge in many parts of the country. It is especially, you know, acute in the Mekong Delta region, which was exposed to the concurrent challenge of COVID-19, as well as a severe drought and sun water intrusion. Across Vietnam, The quality of water and sanitation facility is uh, uh, generally, you know, that uh, is uh, weak. Why 30% <clears throat> of schools across Vietnam do not have running water? More than 35% of communes hand station in Điện Biên, not of Vietnam, Zalai Con Tu Mening Thuận in the middle, in the center of Vietnam, Provinces also reported insufficient on unsafe drinking water. Uh, that's why, you know, uh, they did not practice regular uh, hand washing with soap and use of hand uh, uh, sanitizer. Uh, that's why, you know, the outbreak pre and post social distance periods potentially leading to outbreak of other diseases. So here, you know, is a UNICEF report and also military education uh, training uh, in Vietnam report. And limited access to wash is the program, uh, you know, is uh, uh, water satinization and hygiene. Uh, also contribute to childhood uh, under nutrition including stunning, you know, stunting among children under five uh, years old, 
that's at uh, 23% before the pandemic. And the government investment in water and sanitation facility and service has been limited and declined by almost 30% between the year 2016 and the year 2018. During the same period, only 6% of wash purchase was allocated basic sanitation at household level and only 0.01% and 0.02%, you know, water, you know, uh, allocated for hygiene promotion and hand washing respectively. Here's the UNICEF, uh, UNICEF uh, the year 2020 report. And another thing that impact on quality and uh, inclusive uh, education and training. And you know that the school closure impacted on estimate 21.2 million people nationwide and mean the loss of access uh, to key health and uh, protective uh, services as well as uh, subsidized school meals. Moreover, COVID-19 may have uh, triggered school dropout as a children accompany parents seeking employment opportunity at new location. For example, 3% of survey rural households reported they stopped sending children to school due to the reduced income. Household registration remain a potential administrative barrier, especially, you know, uh, migrant children to access the public education system. It's, uh, you know, uh, figure uh, from UNESCO, IOM, INGO, and then uh, also the Institute for Policy and uh, Strategy for Agriculture and Rural Development in Vietnam, the year 2020. And most notably, I think, the COVID-19 crisis uh, you know that, uh, you know, uh, as I stated, the country starts uh, digital divide, this one. Why? Because uh, during the COVID-19, we know that the school is closure. And also, you know, that uh, the method for learning and teaching during that time almost online. But many learners live in remote region with limited internet Coverage cannot afford devices required for online learning or do not have a teacher's confidence to facilitate such a learning. Yes, the provision of online and distance learning program did not achieve a nationwide coverage. Such a learning program was available from primary to university level, however, they primarily focus on the grade, you know, nine to 12. Only Hanoi, it's mean in the capital of Vietnam, has program from grade one to 12. As a province cover grade nine and the fee apply for some video lessons. Online and distance learning focus on fewer subject, math, you know, Vietnamese and English, and also not available in ethnic minority language is a problem. Uh, the figure from Malaysia and uh, uh, UNICEF uh, report on the year. Half of the survey in ethnic group by UNICEF interview participant reported that children study less or not at all while school was closed. Many teachers was not well equipped to facilitate online learning while ethnic minority children and children with uh, disability was uh, disproportionately affected. And then here is the report uh, from uh, UNICEF. And another thing is the impact on the livelihood, food security and nutrition why social distancing is an effective measure to prevent transmission of COVID-19. It also has serious impact 
on the likelihood of majority of the publicly vulnerable people in Vietnam, I think. Regional cat labor or domestic remittances are a second excessively income sources for poor and near poor farmer family. This source normally, uh, you know, that additional cash to cover protein food, essentially, you know, item and utility bill. In addition, livelihood and food security worsen in Mekong Delta, severely affected by drought and slight intrusion. Since uh, the last quarter, Limited daily income may lead to different negative uh, coping uh, mechanics and skipping or uh, reducing meal, prioritizing children food, or uh, sale or uh, productive access. In Kamau province, for example, a number of families who had just escaping from poor poverty faced, uh, you know, difficulty in accessing sufficient food and restoration of livelihood activity. This family formed out of the government social assistance was involved in non-agriculture uh, work. And uh, also, I think that in uh, the long-term impact on poverty and vulnerability, I think that is the remain major concern. COVID-19, you know, Heighten financial strain on people, including providing for basic needs of children, medical care for women and children, particularly for those with disability and the remote location. In one survey by government of Vietnam, 57% of interview informant was jobless. 25% had less paid work during the social distancing periods. 44% reported have no income and 40% less income during the social distancing periods. Half of the rural household survey reported average income decrease and 33% uh, reported reduced income from non-farm activity by an average percent. Nationwide, 71% of uh, 38 million workers as in informal employ employment falling between the crack of tax fishing, fiscal, social assistance and contributory social insurance. It means that these workers have no choice but not to, but just to continue working or uh, are reluctant to shell as late. This, you know, exposing themselves to further hell and as a rich. So how uh, about, you know, the um, government? I think that uh, here, the response from the government is that the first one, national COVID-19 response plan representing by government of Vietnam. multi sector uh, measure and response to the crisis was the first issue on the 20 January, the year 2020, updated to, uh, you know, 30, uh, first January 2020 and currently being updated. It including Vietnam is down 62 trillion equivalent to, uh, you know, 1.6 billion US dollar for social protection package with cash support for those most vulnerable and worker who has a lot job. Yeah, it means that they can have only 1 million uh, Vietnamese dong, uh, equivalent to appropriate metry about uh, uh, 43 US dollar per month per household and worker have a loss in the informal sector job from uh, April to June 2020 as the impacted uh, enterprise with low interest credit to pay worker salary. 
and the rest from plan two. This is completed by United Nations COVID-19 response support uh, plan uh, that uh, you know that focus on five pillar. The first, ensuring essential health service are available and protecting health system in Vietnam. The second is helping people cope with adversity through social protection and basic service. The third is the protecting job, uh, supporting small and medium sized enter uh, enterprises and informant sector workers through economic response and recovery bro uh, programs. And the fourth is guiding the surge in fis uh, fiscal and financial stimulate to make macroeconomic policy work for the most vulnerable and strengthening multilateral and uh, regional response and the fifth promoting social cohesion and investing uh, investing in community less uh, resilient and response system it's the my uh, answer to the question thank you Thank you, Professor Dr. Do Thu Ha, for your very informative reply to the question. And so everyone, thank you for joining. So it has come to an end of our webinar today. And uh, distinguished guests, I would like to uh, thank you all on behalf of the Consulate General of India in Ho Chi Minh City for, for your gracious presence with us today in the webinar on the social security of India and Vietnam. And I, uh, when the consulate decided to host this program, we believe that this is the first time we conduct such kind of the topic relating to the social security issue, which is a rising issue and matter in both India and Vietnam. And we are overwhelmed with the result that we also received a huge number of participants that we have record of more than 500 participants today with us. And uh, we also thank our speaker today, uh, Professor Dr. Do Thu Ha, Madam Thanh Do, Nguyễn Thị Thanh Tùng, and also Dr. Muni Raju for your research. And I believe that it's a huge effort and also a lot of time consuming for you to prepare such uh, presentations and also to share with us and once again thank you and i would like to wish you all a very successful and happy week ahead and uh, dear everyone i would like to invite all of the participants to access the report link in the chat box and to register yourselves once again in order to help us in facilitating the a certificate of appreciation the registration form will be valid for the next 15 minutes Thank you, everyone.